beer. A testament to our collective joy, memories, and contemplation has transcended mere refreshment. We have sought beer to salute the celestial orb that graces our skies and offered libations to the lunar deities in humble tribute. We have placed hop-filled ambrosia upon sacred shrines and poured one out for our homies. Today, life's amber nectar will once again place chaperone as athleticism and libation dance on the jagged edge of glory, teetering between the realms of immortality and the abyss of exile as they push the boundaries of human potential. In this fleeting moment, science and culture mingle, forging a blessed example of our shared humanity. This is where ambition meets audacity and the boundaries of possibility are pushed to their limits. It is the ultimate test that intertwines pace and prost at the pinnacle of human achievement. It is the celebration that stitches together cultures and defines us as one. It is an event like no other. It is the Beer Mile World Classic. Hey, welcome to Chicago, everybody. Great to see everybody here tonight at Hope Academy, Chicago, Illinois, where the weather is hot and the times are hotter. Yeah, it's uh, it's a little inclement right now. So I'm Travis Price, and I'm joined here by uh, Will Lear in the booth. We are introducing the pre-show here right now. Uh, so we are really excited about what we have today. We have some of the top beer milers from the entire planet that have gathered here in Chicago on this, well, you know, so-so day. Uh, but seems to be a great day. Is there ever a bad day to run a beer mile? Oh, yeah, well, it depends on how what, you know, what your decision tree looks like, but yes, uh, there's always time to run a beer mile. All right, so we're gonna give it a quick intro to Josh here. Uh, so Josh, take it away. but that's not a uh, that's not a problem we're just working out some early glitches it's a pre-show seems like an opportunity to come with a solution right yeah yeah exactly um let's talk about uh you know let's talk about the early parts of the parts of the day but at first we want to make sure that we give a shout out to two brothers beer and to athletic brewing they're the ones that are put help us put this event on yeah without whom we wouldn't be able to have this glorious event today uh, we've had heats and heats and heats upon heats of beer miles leading into these premium events um, with athletes from across the world giving it their absolute all with their chugging and their running. And we've had a couple of epic vomits so far, so we'll see oh, what yeah. the night holds in store for us. Oh. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, all right. to the 2023 Beer Mile World Classic. I stand before you with a mix of excitement, anticipation, and a hint of disbelief as we prepare to witness the unyielding power of athleticism and ale-fueled ambition. On a stage set for glory, we host the battleground of brews, where a collision of hopes, dreams, suds, and sweats will crown champions and birth eternal adulation. Four laps stand between our contenders in unfiltered glory, but there's a twist to this sultry saga. Prior to each lap, each must master their gullets and provide internal refuge for 12 ounces of liquid courage, fueling their journey towards greatness as they embark on the relentless march of a mile. This is a battle of lager and lungs, a dance on the edge of mythology, with every gulp they trade the serenity of sobriety for the chance at greatness. And so all you distinguished connoisseurs of gastronomic marvels, brace yourselves for a grandiose convergent where the realms of the physical prowess and libation fuse into a mesmerizing tapestry of epicurean opulence. Let us raise our glasses to honor these dauntless competitors. Let your applause be thunderous and your jeers be personal. Let us welcome the Beer Mile World Classic. And for an introduction to these daredevils of the draft, let us turn our expertise to the coverage for today's championship event. In the booth, I'm pleased to welcome two of the finest folks we can find and who are willing to be a part of these shenanigans. 
the frosting on the cake of the beer mile broadcasting and a delicious slice of life, Travis Price. And next to him, Will Lear. Fellas, back to you. Hey, thanks for that awesome intro. Yes, as he mentioned, I'm hungover. And with me, I have Will. Who is unfortunately not hungover. I wish I could have joined you in those exploits last night, but you know, we had a couple of travel snafus getting people into town here. So we got in as quickly as we could. Faster than a beer mile. Yeah, so we had a bunch of heats. We had eight heats this morning, or actually a little bit the uh, later in the afternoon. What what were some of the things that you saw? What were some highlights that you had? I just love to see how every single heat there is, the competitors giving it their absolute all, whether they were coming in the front or the back. I mean, it's celebrating all things beer, all things running. The community is out supporting. Everyone that ran is still hanging around, even though we're, you know, threatening a little bit of stormy weather out here, um, as you could see from some of the drone pullback shots. But, I mean, people just absolutely giving it their all. Nothing more do you want to see. Yeah, so uh, we, had a, we had a couple good races earlier today. I'm just going to kind of highlight some of it. Um, did have a few uh, few pretty bad reversal of fortunes. It started out with some slow slow races, but some of the people I want to point out here, we had uh, Camden Law won, uh, who won Heat 2 in uh, 6 minutes 54. But uh, So that was a big jump there. But we had our first woman in uh, the first heat. She ran uh, 9.05. Um, and, yeah, so we jump around. We had a bunch of vomits on the other uh, on the other ones it was just a uh, kind of classic and you know we got to have a good good, good bit of fun poking uh, poking at some of the athletes there yeah we had a low seven minute finisher in that women's open championship race uh where we got to see also the twin of world record holder Corey bellamore we're for for commercial sake we're gonna call him Corey bellamore jr jr <laughs> came away with the men's open championship in just a hair over six minutes but my gosh these guys were just absolute behemoths of the beer today and there <laughs> yeah there's what there's one of our highlights right there just you know absolutely just chundering it right there we've got the uh, just so excellent finishes right there by some of the women they've just you just watch this like pain of oh. just the reversal of fortune right there it's just epic you know that was Caden early in one of our heats he went out to an early oh. lead and this is why the beer mile is such an enticing event right it's it's not just the running it's the drinking you got to be able to do both you got to be able to hold down all the look at 48 ounces in total and it catches up to you as quickly as fast early laps in an open mile yep um i want to yeah, yep i uh, want to uh have a minute here to talk to Darren Ravel. He's one of our main sponsors here. Darren, hey, welcome to, welcome to the show. Uh, I am here. I'm getting ready to run. You are getting ready to run. That's right. We got the Clydesdale race coming up here in just a moment. So just tell me a little bit about like why you decided to get involved with Chris and, and the whole uh, uh, BMR World Classic Org. Well, I'm an investor in athletic brewing, so I have to support them in any, any way I can. And, uh, yeah, so it's uh, it's great to be here in Chicago. This is my... This is my uh, second city, appropriately. I uh, went to Northwestern for four years, so any, any, uh, any chance I have to come back here, I'm going to do it. And I was supposed to run a beer mile in 2021, and I had to have spinal cord surgery. Oh, so dear. I'm back uh, after a two-year delay. So well, are you, I, I, hopefully this won't lead to another surgery. Did you expect to see this much jackassery? <laughs> what, what, what did you have in mind? What, a, what this, was your expectation? This, this turnout is pretty impressive, I got to tell you. This yeah. Is, this is very impressive. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, and I, I, I love these guys. This is great. So what would you say, like, your mission at, at, at Athletic Brewing is? Listen, I mean, non-alcoholic beer has exploded, and uh, it's just, it's been, it's been so exciting to see uh, that what athletic brewing is doing um, throughout the country to see as the category has exploded and uh, you know people realize what you know these these great occasions that they could drink non-alcoholic beer which is for me every day yeah, and you've got quite a few different varieties of your brew yep um, and it is it is a great refresher too like finish a run but you don't really want to you know, take in, take in any alcohol, but you'd still like that taste of beer and get in some uh, or you're, some or, or you're, you're, you're two beers in and it's a Sunday and uh, it's halftime and you're a father of three and you got to wake up at six in the morning on Monday. And are you, are you drinking, you drinking six more? No. All right. I think we're going to cut away here over to the uh, kind of the intro for the Clydesdale race. So, you know, I just want to thank you for, for stepping yep, thanks, in. Thanks. Yep. Thanks for, thanks for having me. Thanks a lot. 
let us welcome our first event of the evening. We're about to embark on a thrilling journey where the realms of athleticism and libation converge in harmonious fusion. The air is charged with anticipation as these exceptional competitors step onto the stage. Their minds sharpen, their bodies honed, ready to undertake the ultimate test of speed, endurance, and beer swigging prowess. I present to you these valiant souls of the Clydesdale and Athena Division! Let us meet the contestants of today's event. Oh yes, all the way from Denmark, the one and only Fat Craig Engels! with a seed time of seven minutes, the wonderful Kevin Boyle! And in our Athena division, the one and only, Emily Lowe! Joining her in the female division, running nine minutes for her seed time, Molly McQueen! Samantha Hoffman is out here, folks, who looks to battle for the crown as well. Let us give all of our competitors a big round of applause as they set forth on to the glory that awaits them. Are you ready? That is not what I asked. Are you? Competitors, you know the damage that sits before you. You have in your hand cans of delicious Two Brothers beverage that looks dainty and small upon your massive grasp. However, should you choose to go the lighter route, our wonderful athletic brewing non-alcohol is there for your indulgence. Let us bring forth the rules of today's event. There will be four beers and four laps. Should you chunder, throw up, vomit, throw some street pizza, you will have no additional lap. You will then take two minutes onto your time. It is a blessing and it is a curse, but it is yours to bear nonetheless. After four beers, the beers will be placed in the cans, bottoms down, to avoid the spillage. Do you understand the instructions before you? Yeah. Crowd, do you understand what there is before them? Yeah. Officials, are you ready? Timer, are you ready? Yeah. The instructions will be runners set, and then chug. Take one step back from the line. Brace yourselves. Runners set, chug! All right, so we got the start of the race going now. Uh, as you can see, we got our big heavies out there. And that's a, you know, that's a pretty solid first chug. You know, usually you want to see something, you know, in the, you know, the elites do it in the five, six seconds. Um, but that was uh, sub 10. I'm going to say that's a pretty good chug. Yeah, you got to love when you have a full heat of people who self-describe the big boys and girls, right, with the Clydesdales and the Athenas. And not only that, but we have, we have some of the big boys out there in some shorty shorts. Oh, uh, yeah. And, and you just love to see them showing that thigh meat proudly uh, down the back stretch as, as we have an, a veritable Viking absolutely clamoring his way, pounding down the back stretch. Uh, checking times, you know? I, I, I love it. You, yeah. They want to see where they are. Very competitive with one another. Um, but even more so with themselves. Yeah, you got hams bigger than you see on uh, Christmas uh, Christmas dinner right there, making their way around the uh, around way around the track. Let's see, who we got in the lead there. I can't quite get, get the uh, hip number there, so that's uh, number one twenty. That's our athlete 
Oh, I don't have him on the list. 120 is a late add to this field, uh, but but early on in the leader. So love love to see that. You know, maybe made a last second decision to join this section of the racing. Um, look fans looking for a little bit of uh, cajoling coming down the home stretch. They want the support of the live crowd here, and they are getting it. Well, let's see where the shuffle happens here, because everything changes on the first period. Like, huge leads change. You go in, you go into that first lap, you're a little bit gassed. As you can see, you saw that 10 second first chug. They're a lot slower right here, so let's, uh, let's see what happens here. All right, well, you know, we got Mr. Uh, this is Brian Herzog. Oh, Brian Herzog, thank you. Yeah, you Brian know, Herzog. Brian Herzog, 30 years old, from two crew, uh, coming in with a, a personal best of 630, which is no small feat in the beer mile. I don't know if anyone watching this has ever themselves run a beer mile. I personally am abysmal at the four beer, four lap slugfest. Um, but, you know, Brian showing himself to be a formidable competitor, leaving the rest of everyone in the field is in his wake. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah he, he was out on the first beer, and... They caught him a little bit. Now he's opened up. It looks probably like a good 50, 60 meter lead right now. He's just, it's smooth sailing. But again, there's still two more beers out there. So anything can happen at this point. Have you ever seen someone halfway through a, ha a marathon? They look pretty good. Yeah. At the end can be a totally different story. Uh, that's uh, true. But Brian Herzog's putting the left and the right down in rhythmic beauty um, as he comes with 150 meters to go in this lap. I think Brian knew what he had coming in. You know, he knew how hard this was going to be. Yeah, he looks you know, he's lo he looks pretty well in control right there. Well, I <laughs> well. saw a little bit of a grimace right there. Let's see. Well, Brian's giving everything he's got. You know, I, I love to think about it as him just expelling all of that uh, carbonation from the two beers thus far. Coming into beer number three, you know, maybe this is a look of pain. Maybe it's a look of excitement. What do you think, TP? Uh, yeah, 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 it's... You know, it, it's exactly that. You have that look of, now look at that. That's a grimace over there on the right. Is but that a smile a, or a grimace? It's a smile, <laughs> yeah, you never know. But it's that third beer. This is where your eyes get bigger than your stomach and where leads change happen more, almost sometimes more than the first lap. You got to love Brian's strategy. That beer has not left his lips since it hit it for the first time. He knows, put it up, oh, look at that. put it down, see you later. Look at Goodbye how smooth Goodbye beer that number was. three, Brian Herzog, wow. making light work of that 12-ounce multi-bev. Wow, that's that. this guy's an athlete. He looked like he was probably a guard in high school, but uh, he's, uh, he's guarding that beer in his stomach right now, making sure it doesn't come back up to uh, revisit the floor. You also got to love that he's footwear appropriate for this. He's gone with some distant spikes. He knows how well this technology is going to work for him. He's playing into his strengths. American flag shorts. We're celebrating on the eve of celebrating the 4th of July. Brian Herzog, you know, I, not a care in the world going on the backstretch there. Hey. The wind in his hair billowing it beautifully. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I can see him gassing a little bit, though. Let's see if he rigs up on the last lap. I hope not for the spectator's point, but you know, I, again, we're, we're losing a little bit of the competitors here because we're sort of behind this massive crowd, the live crowd that we have here on the home stretch. Um, you know, maybe we can get a little bit of, uh, from the producers. Have we seen any throw ups yet? Are these big boys and girls, they just keeping it down, no problem. Yeah, I, I, haven't, heard, I haven't heard the oohs or ahs. All right, so we are you coming can, yeah. down around, making the final curve going into that last beer. He is slowing down a bit. This is still a, you know, I, I call it a quality time. But the field's catching him back up. I'm really curious. He's going to come out with a big lead on the next beer, I'm pretty sure. Does he get walked down in the last lap? Because you got Mr. Grimace, the, uh, the green machine right there, who's coming in for his last beer. Well, and there's uh, competitor 217, Samantha Hoffman, um, going into her third beer as the men are entering their fourth. You know, I think maybe this first beer tasted pretty good. I don't know if these guys are tasting anything at this point besides potential victory. Yeah, well, Kevin Boyle is, was in the lead going into this last beer. Uh, we'll see. We'll see if he uh, can put this down. But you know, look, look, look at our look at our most most of the time race leader right there. He this is, is our champion. Right. This, this is the people's champion right there. He's the getting people. USA chance on the home stretch. But really now, where this comes down to, it's not just a drinking. Right. This is a drinking and running event. Clearly, Brian has shown himself to be the king of the beers tonight. But. Look, at, look out for these athletes behind him. They know exactly how fast they need to run. He is the rabbit in the race, the pinnacle of perfection right now when it comes to four beers. And what does he have left you know, with 300 meters to go in this uh, Clydesdale beer mile? All I know is that I, for some reason, want to see him holding a big log on his shoulder like Hacksaw Jim Duggan. I don't think he would run any more slowly. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> he seems full of power and determination right here. But 
I mean, gosh, when we pan up, you just, you know these athletes are coming. The cadence oh, on the athlete following him. They are coming up hot right of now. Our this late is, ad. I don't think it's going to be a close race here. I think he is going to get walked down here. Come on, Brian. Come on, Brian. Everything you, you got, kick. pal. This is for the glory. This is something you'll tell your kids about one day. Oh, he's getting absolutely smoked. Oh, man. No response. Oh, man. Kevin Boyle has just put the hammer down. In fact, the entire field is starting to roll him in. Oh, look at this. Look at that belly move. Oh, we got, you just, you'd love to see it absolutely flying down the home stretch. A beautiful drone shot to show exactly what this athlete is looking at as he approaches the finish line. He's going to be sub seven. Sub seven for a big guy. That's pretty epic. I will give credit where credit's due. That's a lot of pounds to be towing around the field, and then you're adding another four pounds of beer on top of that. And the camaraderie, Ben Patterson coming away with the W there. A late ad. We did not have him on our start sheet, unfortunately. No disrespect to Ben, but my goodness, what a finish. He must have run Brian, Brian Herzog down by 100 meters in that last lap. Yeah, and I actually said that wrong. Uh, it was Kevin Boyle who was, who was a little bit back there as the other green shirt, but yes, thanks for, uh, thanks for clarifying on that. With so many green shirts, they all start to look the same, you know what I mean? Well, uh, we saw a lot of jorts earlier today, so... It was a thing of absolute beauty, a thing of beauty. Uh, you, you know, d the absolute profound athleticism that he showed, uh, but we have an interview with our leader. Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, I am here with your Clydesdale and Athena winner, the one and only, the newly minted man of the hour, Ben Patterson! At the beginning, there was darkness, but in the end, you saw the light and came through. Walk us through that final fantastic 400. Uh, I just knew that if I closed hard, I could win. Uh, so I just was prepared to just eat shit, and I probably will in five minutes, but it paid off. There you go, throwing caution to the wind. Laying it all on the line for a moment of glory. Ben. Oh, we are interrupted by the chunder from a side. Ben, it's more than just mere running talent. You have the gullet of a god. Tell us, how did you train for this epic win? Uh, I've just done an embarrassing amount of beer miles in my life. So just showing up and doing another one. <laughs> There you go, practice makes perfect, or better yet, practice makes you a winner. Travis will take that to heart as we go back to you in the studio. All right, thank you for that, Josh. Great commentary right there. We're gonna hear a word from our sponsors, Balance and Two Brothers. Chris and Adam here with BeerMile.com. Today we're at Two Brothers Brewing in Warrenville, Illinois, and we're here to find the perfect beer mile beer. Let's go. Brendan McGrath, I'm operations manager here at Two Brothers. Been here 16 years, and uh, I got some beers to try. Did you ever think you would be working with anyone putting on a beer mile and working oh. on a beer mile beer? Was this uh, something you envisioned someday? No, it was not. <laughs> <laughs> Prairie Path here is uh, beer path. number two. It's, All right. Uh, yeah, it's a little lighter there. It's a golden ale. Much Chris, lighter. But, yeah. But it yeah. sounds smooth. So you, so you think the, the Prairie Path is the one? It might be the one. It might be the one. Let's go make some Prairie Path beer mile beer. Let's do it. Well, on a 
hard day's work. Only thing left to do is to chug. Cheers. Smooth. <laughs> All right, thanks. That's the uh, conclusion of our pre-show here. So, um, all right. So, you know, cheers. Cheers Absolutely. to a good pre-show. Uh, stick around. We've got a couple ads coming up, and we will be out with our main event here. So stick around. There's going to be a, uh, a celebrity heat, the women's championship, the men's championship, a legends race. It's going to be a great show. So please Can't stick wait. around. Cannot wait. You came into my nature, the stronger the flavor, the more I can feed the power of my inner hunger to my lotus. <laughs> This is my long run coffee because of the electrolytes. Oh, no way. Can you make me some? This is an epic, action-packed, adventure-filled story of Athletic Brewing's revolutionary non-alcoholic beer and the founders behind it. I'm Bill. And I'm John. You see, this is no ordinary non-alcoholic beer. These are great tasting brews that are fit for all times. And they all started with a crazy idea. Why can't there just be an amazing non-alcoholic beer that wouldn't affect me the next day? And one that actually tasted great? Oh, wow. That's a great idea. And there you have it. Just two totally delusional people. <laughs> nature the stronger the flavor the more i can feed the power of my inner hunger to my lotus <laughs> Chris and Adam here with BeerMile.com. Today we're at Two Brothers Brewing in Warrenville, Illinois, and we're here to find the perfect beer mile beer. Let's go. Brendan McGrath, I'm operations manager here at Two Brothers. Been here 16 years, and uh, I got some beers to try. Did you ever think you would be working with anyone putting on a beer mile and working <laughs> on a beer mile beer? Was this uh, something you envisioned someday? No, it was not. <laughs> <laughs> Prairie Path here is uh, beer path. number two. It's, All right. Uh, yeah, it's a little lighter there. It's a golden ale. Much crisp, lighter. Uh, yeah. The it yeah. sounds smooth. So you, so you think the, the Prairie Path is the one? It might be the one. It might be the one. Let's go make some Prairie Path beer mile beer. Let's do it. day's work. Only thing left to do is to chug. Cheers. Smooth.
testament to our collective joy, memories, and contemplation has transcended mere refreshment. We have sought beer to salute the celestial orb that graces our skies and offered libations to the lunar deities in humble tribute. We have placed hop-filled ambrosia upon sacred shrines and poured one out for our homies. Today, life's amber nectar will once again place chaperone as athleticism and libation dance on the jagged edge of glory, teetering between the realms of immortality and the abyss of exile as they push the boundaries of human potential. In this fleeting moment, science and culture mingle, forging a blessed example of our shared humanity. This is where ambition meets audacity and the boundaries of possibility are pushed to their limits. It is the ultimate test that intertwines pace and prost at the pinnacle of human achievement. It is the celebration that stitches together cultures and defines us as one. It is an event like no other. It is the Beer Mile World Classic. I stand before you with a mix of excitement anticipation, and a hint of disbelief as we prepare to witness the unyielding power of athleticism and ale-infused ambition. On a stage set for glory, we host a battleground of brews where the collision of hopes, dreams, and suds and sweat will crown champions and birth eternal adulation. Four laps stand between our contenders in unfiltered glory, but there is a twist to this sultry saga. Prior to each lap, each must master their gullets and provide internal refuge for 12 ounces of pure liquid courage, yeah. fueling their journey towards greatness as they embark on the relentless march of a mile. This is a battle of lager and lungs, a dance on the edge of mythology. With every gulp, they trade serenity of sobriety for a chance at greatness. And so all you distinguished connoisseurs of gastronomic marvels, brace yourself for a grandiose convergence where the realms of the physical prowess and libation views a mesmerizing tapestry of Epicurean opulence. Let us raise our glasses to honor these dauntless competitors. Let your applause be thunderous. And your jeers be personal. Let us welcome the Beer Mile World Classic. And for an introduction to these daredevils of the draft, let's turn to our expert coverage of today's championship events. In the booth, I am pleased to welcome two of the finest folks we can find and who are willing to be a part of these shenanigans. The frosting on the cake of beer mile broadcasting and a delicious slice of life, Travis Price. And sitting next to him, the one and only, Will Lear, gentlemen. Back to you for today's events. Well, that was a fantastic introduction. How do you respond to that? I, I don't know. Well, as this crazy train leaves the station and heads towards this inevitable dumpster fire of dysfunction, uh, you're probably all wondering, what is a beer mile? It's four beers, four laps, done in succession, where you can't have more than one ounce remaining per beer. Well, we've got a uh, quick little video here about uh, about what it means to do a beer mile. So I think we're... Ready to roll that? The beer mile is extremely technical. It's a gastric competition. The intersection of speed, uh, strength of your stomach. It is literally a bunch of crazy human beings running around a track drinking a load of beer. Um, it involves chugging four beers and running four laps on a track. You do a beer, you do a lap, you do a beer, you do a lap, you do it four times and then you finish. And you can't throw up, otherwise you have to run a penalty lap. Don't treat it like it's gonna be a fun thing, because it's not. 
it hurts. That part, that part you can't bike. You also gotta make sure that you don't leave more than four ounces of beer left over. So the key to the beer mile is definitely making sure you pace yourself throughout. So immediately when the gun goes off, you're in a, you're in a place of distress. And the race starts, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm doing really well, I'm gonna win. Um, and then it gets to like lap three and I'm like, oh no, I'm not gonna win now. <laughs> and everybody races like bats out of hell. But at no point are you ever confident that you're gonna finish strong, ever. That's part of the beauty of it. I hate it. <laughs> After the beer mile, it's the perfect, perfect feeling. You don't feel drunk during the race, but it's kind of like a couple of minutes immediately after you've crossed the finish line. And then instantly you're like, oh my gosh, what is going on in my head? <laughs> if you haven't tried it, you should do it. Welcome to Chicago, where we are proud to have ourselves at the World Beer Mile Classic. This is the pinnacle of beer miling. Happens once a year. We bring in the best athletes from all over the world. Will? There are some times in this sport, and in sport in general, where single entities can change a sport's trajectory. Tiger Woods, Usain Bolt, Michael Jordan, Corey Bellamore. These people have absolutely, Corey has changed the world of beer miling and he's here tonight to show us his stuff. I cannot wait for this men's championship race, but even more so the races that are leading up to it. I mean, this is like a prize fight. It's just good match after good match after good match. Yeah, I don't, don't count out the excitement that's going to happen out of that women's race. Uh, there is a lot of quality competitors out there. There was some drama from last year that uh, some people are out to, I wouldn't say settle scores, but you know, write the, uh, write the history books. Absolutely. You know, you've, that's one of the best things about sport. You can come back and try again next year, right? If it didn't go your way last time, try and try again. So we're very much looking forward to seeing all the competitors here this evening. They put the time, they put the miles, they put in the beers. Uh, and let's see if they can combine the two for something truly spectacular. Yep, and we've got some highlights from today as well. There was, uh, we spent a couple, uh, couple of hours running. We had eight heats. Um, we started from some of the slowest, <laughs> slowest races we've ever seen. I think we had someone come in at like around 20 minutes. Um, those are some of the highlights here. A uh, little bit of inclement weather too, but we're able to uh, we're able to work around that. What were, what were some of the things that really just jumped out at you from from earlier today? The dedication and passion that every single person that stepped on this track today brought. I mean, they're, they're bringing energy, they're bringing the heat, they're bringing the hype, they're bringing the pukes, and they're bringing the cheers. So every single person that's run has stuck around to cheer on the, the later heats, the championship races, our celebrity uh, races. But as you're seeing from some of the pictures <laughs> on, on the screen, these are men and women who came out here ready to run hard and ready to have fun. Absolutely. And you just, look at, you, look, you look at the animation of, of this guy and his, yeah, it does the uh, the spike pop right there, and there was actually some really challenging races in there too. They had hot finishes on some of the women's race, and <laughs> this was awesome. Oh, this is one of our early pukes of the day. This was Keegan in Heat One, who thought that he had this thing wrapped up until Beer Four. And let me just say, this is a story that we're going to be revisit, and he's going to be re revisiting that time and time again. Oh yeah, that's the uh, tummy time machine right there. Get to uh, revisit uh, as we see just an, a bunch more reversal of fortunes right there. If you haven't eaten dinner tonight, maybe avert your eyes from the screen. Get ready for some more running action uh, because we had a couple of epic explosions from the stomach. Uh, a reversals of fortune as we've been calling them all day. Well, yep. And uh, coming up here in just a moment, we are going to have our celebrity race. Uh, we've got uh, we've got our sponsor here from from Athletic Brewing as well. Um, but uh, we have, coming up in our celebrity race, we have quite a few celebrities that um, you, might, you, you might recognize. Some of them are, are, are a little, uh, little more uh, germane, but it's going to be a fun race. If you don't recognize these names, pull up your Google machine and get to work, people. So we've got Neve Shulman, MTV's Catfish host, uh, Darren Ravel, who's a consummate sports personality, interviewed by the likes of Kobe Bryant and Michael Jordan. Uh, we've got Francis Ellis, uh, an Instagram, a very famous Instagram comedian. That's right. And uh, after that, we've got um, Carlin Isles and Ken, uh, Ken Rideout, as well as uh, Cynthia, Fr uh, Cynthia Fruland, uh, who's from ESPN and is a data person. But uh, we do want to get a word from one of our sponsors, actually our key sponsor here. So uh, we want to hear about Athletic Brewing epic, action-packed, adventure-filled story of Athletic Brewing's revolutionary non-alcoholic beer and the founders behind it. I'm Bill. And I'm John. You see, this is no ordinary non-alcoholic beer. 
These are great tasting brews that are fit for all times. And they all started with a crazy idea. Why can't there just be an amazing non-alcoholic beer that wouldn't affect me the next day? And one that actually tasted great? Oh, wow. That's a great idea. And there you have it. Just two totally delusional people. <laughs> We had a, the great joy of talking to a couple of these celebrity personalities that are going to be doing this race today, asking them, have they ever done a beer mile? When was the last time they chugged a beer? Got, saw some weak knees out there, TP. Yeah, it's, this is going to be, I'd probably say a little bit more entertaining because we have no idea what to expect with this, uh, with this group of runners. But uh, let's take it over to Josh right now. In desperate attempts to remain relevant in a fast-moving world, these mainstream mavens will jostle not just for your viewing pleasure and clicks. They will also seek to outrun the doubters, the haters, and their freshman year algebra teacher who said they would amount to nothing in this life. To that I say, who is laughing now, Mrs. Williams? Let us find our voices for each resounding laugh as these valiant souls navigate the delicate balance between fleet-footed agility and the tantalizing embrace of the golden elixir. It is my pleasure to introduce the competitors of the athletic brewing celebrity race. We have on the inside in the pole position, standing, ready to go. He, at 52 years young, has run 228 for a marathon. Put your hands together for Ken Rideout. Next to him up the line, you know him as an avid runner. You may also know him as the TV host from the show Catfish, Nev Showman. Yeah. All the way from the US national rugby team, let's give it up to the one and only Carlin Isles. Yeah. And the wonderful NFL reporter joining us to elevate her understanding of all that's good in the sporting world. Let's give it up for Cynthia Freeland. And one of the first to enter into the athletic brewing family. And he is, without a doubt, one of your favorite or top 50 media personalities, the one and only Jerry Ravel. And on the outside, without question, cameras, ready and willing to capture his ever-charming Harvard smile, the one and only Francis Ellis! Oh. Competitors, you know your mission before you. This is where you say, yeah, yeah. I do. Are you excited? Woo. Crowd, are you excited to see some pain? Grab your first beer, and the commands will be runner set and then chug. One step back from the line. When I say open, Darren, hang tight. Timers, are you ready? Officials, are you ready? Runners, set, chug! All right, we got the start of the celebrity heat here. I wonder who's going to come out uh, come out in first. Actually, that's a pretty good, pretty quick chug there by uh, by Ken. Ken Ryder, uh, the guy does not mess around. 228 at age 52 is <laughs> that's Solid. real running. So he's he's got the the tools clearly to to make light work of this event. But also, I'm just going to call this out. If you don't like our feed, clearly these uh, influencers in the wild out here are doing a fantastic job doing some Instagram live stories themselves. So follow along. Uh, with any of these celebrities along this journey today, journey of pain, and uh, we'll see who comes out as the victorious one. Yeah, you got, uh, right now you've got um, Carlin Isles also running pretty well. Uh, that was a pretty impressive first chug, though, for people who were not pros in this thing. I, uh, I like what I saw to start, start the race out, and you're right, at 52 and a solid marathoner. Let's see how he does on the next couple of beers. And 
don't let this NA beer thing scare you from thinking that this is not as difficult of a challenge as with, you know, the full full throttle uh, unleaded fuel that the women and men are going to be drinking later. This beer tastes exactly like a normal beer. It froths just like another normal beer. Um, and so, you know, these guys are going to be, these men and women are going to be dealing with the same pain and discomforts as uh, every other race that we're showing tonight. All right, now we've got uh, Ken Rideout coming out right in first place. He has a pretty good lead. I'd probably say that's about uh, 25 meters right there. He's cracking open a second beer. Let's see how fast he gets it down. That's some pretty good technique too. Uh, he did bring it down though, so let's see what. Let's see how this battle uh, comes around in the chug zone. The, the first beer went down easy. The second beer, not so much. I don't love to see the hands on the knees from Carl and Isles. This oh. is not going so well for this young man. A little bit of drill um, there. There we go. How are you? See, he's out. Ken's out. He's got. A, you know, he's working out some burps. He's working out some kinks. He's figuring this out. He clearly watched the Corey Bellamore how-to video uh, before he stepped on the line today. Yeah, good, good form, good technique. Got to appreciate the uh, the grit right there. It's always a little slow that first 50, 60 meters when you come out of that chug zone. So you'll see, you'll see him pick up the pace here pretty soon. Well, you know, Ken's getting, the, from the glory of the gods above, he's getting a very cooling shower as he makes his way down the backstretch. And he's working these burps out just like he's working out some uh, meter by meter of this 400 meter oval. Well, he has opened up a huge lead, a huge lead over Carlin right now. Yeah, well, we saw Carlin take to the track basically on that second beer there. I think Carlin was, you know, doing his best to be competitive, trying to not lose touch from the leader of this race. But Ken has just really proven himself to be the best of the rest. Uh, and, and is absolutely dominating this celebrity beer mile. And I think it, I think at about 200 meters behind, I think we have Cynthia back there. I, I can't really quite tell, but it looks by the silhouette that that's probably her, who's also a pretty accomplished marathoner herself, right? Absolutely. And you got to think that agreeing to do this, uh, while the beer mile is as stupid as it is fun, uh, you know, she knows what she's getting herself into. So she's very, very comfortable putting down a couple of multi bevs. Um, as well as, you know, putting those feet in front of each other. So really excited to see what happens when Carlin comes under pressure from uh, not just trying to keep up with Ken, but also pressure from behind. Yeah, and we are now in the third beer. The third beer, for a lot of times, that's when your eyes are bigger than your stomach. It's a, you kind of realize, all right, this is serious. I'm going to hurt. I am really going to hurt. I think the fourth beer is actually one of the easiest ones because now you're just pumped full of adrenaline. But right here, this is, this is where it gets tough. But he looks really confident. This is literally no problem for, for Ken Rideout. It does appear as though he's wearing a little bit of this beer, um, <laughs> taking it almost like a necktie down the front of his shirt, but I'm not gonna be one to call uh, call out any, any foul play here. Ken's doing an awesome job, absolutely giving a human's effort in the celebrity beer mile. Love to see some of the, the, the footage from the finish line right now because you got to think that one of these guys is going to let it go. Carlin not looking so good. He is really <laughs> trying to keep this beer down. You can see how big his eyes are right now. They're about as big as those cans that he's trying to put down. And here comes Neve Schulman. I don't know if he felt like he was getting catfished by coming in to do this event. Um, but Neve, a consummate competitor, doesn't like to lose. I know that much about that man. But Ken Rideout has approaching a 200 meter lead on this field and continuing to open the gap. I have not seen another athlete leave the beer area. Yeah, this is, uh, this is a just... I'd call it almost insurmountable lead at this point, unless he really flounders on that last beer, or if he has, you know, the, the reversal of fortune, it, it can change on a dime. The fans at the finish line here just told us that that was the first big puke that we've seen the Celebrity Challenge. So we will get that in the highlight reel in the post race, but right now all eyes are on Ken Rideout as he's approaching beer number four. Beer number four, and he, it's actually a pretty good time. If he can get this beer down, I'd probably say in like less than 30 seconds, He's looking at probably about a sub seven, which okay. would be absolutely insane. Yeah, this is not something that I thought I was going to see today in this celebrity meal. He's like, he's 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 so uh, out of sorts right now. He doesn't even know what beer he's on. Yeah, but he's feeding the energy off the crowd here. He's getting he's getting some shout outs from Neb right now too. I love the encouragement. That's one of the other great things about this sport is it's so positive. There aren't, there aren't any like bitter rivalries. That's of note. It's everyone's really just kind of encouraging each other. And ooh, I heard a, heard a nice little wretch back there. Oof. Yeah, Neve knows that his his chances at victory today uh, are, are out the window, we can put it that way. And so he's doing his best to cheer on Ken to something spectacular here in the Celebrity Beer Mile. Ken, you, you see that head bobbing and weaving up and down. He cannot be comfortable right now. Oh, uh, yeah, it's... Uh Oh, I have done this before. It's not a fun feeling. But once you hit that last, say, 200, 200 meters, 
you can just hit the gas because you know if you're gonna you know you're gonna toss it. You can you can at least make it to the finish line. It's you know just like running a marathon and you're trying to close out that last you know that last 1.2 miles. That head just keeps going down. It keeps bobbing, keeps moving. But he's got eyes on some competitors up in front of him that he's trying to chase down right now. This is absolutely spurring on the best of the best that we're going to see from Ken today. And gosh, you just love to see it. You know, you can tell by how his cadence has changed, how his arm carriage has changed, his elbows, his shoulders are up near his ears. He's giving absolutely every ounce that he's got right now. He's lapping the back of the field. Bobbing here. and weaving through the other competitors. It's all Ken Rideout. Oh, this is awesome. As the crowd's cheering him in, this is actually a solid time. He might break seven. It's going to be pretty close. Right about, he's probably going to be about 52, 53, 49, 50. All right, 650. That's for a novice time. That's pretty good. You know, one of the other things to note about, uh, about this beer, it's a different level when you're drinking out of cans. It's a lot harder to do. Absolutely, yeah. You're going to see the, uh, the men's and women's championship races. Most of the athletes electing to go with the bottle because it just comes out a bit cleaner. And here comes Neve coming in a hard second place finish. We think that this is his finish. I have no idea if Neve has another beer or not. Oh, he does. This poor man. Oh, this boy. poor man. This is, uh, is going to be rough. The fans this behind us, the fans in front of us are, are really just, uh, they're, they're cheering on these competitors. Oh, gosh. <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, boy. <laughs> Cynthia Freeland breathing out that beer, breathing in some energy. Great stuff. This is great. Francis Ellis doesn't really know what he had coming for him. Uh, All right, he got he fin he finally finished. That's a still still a solid run. Eight fifteen. Yeah, I remember when I did my first official one. That's about what I ran. So I, I you know mad respect to the guy. You know, love to hear from someone like Carl Niles who does a sport that's so physically brutal. How does this stack up? How does this stack up to a scrum? How did this stack up to a big rugby hit? Uh, you know, that, that feeling in your gut, that burning, that it has got to be some similarities there. All right, we're going to cut away to our finisher right now here in just a second. Folks, we are here with the Athletic Brewing Celebrity Champion. It was a glorious effort out there. Ken, tell us, please. Let us into your world. How did you manage to pull off this prestigious win tonight? Uh, beginner's luck. First and last bear mile. It was real. <laughs> I hope I never see another bear mile again. Oh, well, <laughs> you heard it here. I bet we can convince him to come back. Now, you've run a 228 marathon at 52. You want to race across the Gobi Desert. You want to go back to the marathon, back to the desert, or back to the beer mile? Marathon. The desert, I'd rather be dead. Bear mile second, marathon the easiest. There you have it. Easier. Oh, whoa, whoa, it's a train wreck coming through. Carlin, now, now, Carlin, before you run away here, we can sense the competitive juices flowing. At what point did you realize that, oh man, this is a lot harder than I expected? I mean, probably about the second or third lap. Yeah. He was shutting them things down so fast, and I was like, oh my God. <laughs> so I tried to keep my distance as much as possible, but he was so efficient. Cool, though, see the machine. <laughs> Look, you know, baby. when I saw him warming up, I was like, I'm gonna lose by three minutes. <laughs> three minutes a mile, impressive stuff. Look, gentlemen, for your efforts, I'm happy to buy the beers for the rest of the night. What do you say, huh? <laughs> beers on me for you guys? I probably need a few minutes where I can even think about another beer. All right, we'll let you cool down. Give him a big round of applause, Ken right up, Carl and I. What a wonderful job out here. Back to you in the booth. Wow, that was, uh, that was a fun race. I'm, uh, I'm really liking it. We're waiting for the, uh, the official results board to come up, but uh, you know, what, what can I say? That was, that was a lot of fun to watch. Yeah, uncontested at the front from the very first beer, Ken Rideout just showed what he was made of. Grit, determination, toughness uh, across every aspect that this sport requires. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, you know, shout out to, to the rest of them, taking, taking a risk coming out here today.
that's just, uh, you know, it's, it's great seeing what other people can do. Absolutely. So we've got, uh, we got an events preview of, of the other events that we got coming up tonight. Um, we have a, we've got the Legends race coming up where we have legends of yesteryear and current upcoming champions, future champions. Uh, we have the men's championship and the women's championship. Uh, where we would crown not only individual titles, but also a team title, as a team country championship is uh, shaping up to be fantastic. Yeah, there we are. We So we have the Legends race coming up at 6.40 for all of you at home. Then at 7, it's the Women's Championship. Then at 7.30, it's the kind of the main event presented by Two Brothers Brewing, one of our other key sponsors here. Uh, that's the Men's Championship. And then at 7.40, it's the, uh, it's the award ceremony. And then we'll be on camera, but then we have Jack Assery with the relays. <laughs> Now, if you thought that was exciting, which it was, it's just absolutely, that, that's peanuts compared to what we got coming up the rest of the night. I, yeah. I just can't tell you how these, these close races that the, the fields have assembled here this evening, the Beer Mile Media folks is just absolutely fantastic. Um, but we're going we're gonna to throw it on to Josh here real quick for a celebrity interview. He's running away, he's the stairs. All right, folks, I'm here there with Neve. We were just chatting a little bit. Congratulations on your finish, oh, wow. the coveted medal. Now, we knew there was a rough patch in the race today. <laughs> Maybe you're questioning the decision to come out here, but now that it's all said and done, tell us your thoughts about the, uh, the experience, shall we say. I think the only time and only thing I was questioning was, why haven't I been doing this my whole life? Oh. Okay. On that third beer I'm drinking, I'm thinking, man, if I'd only been drinking more beers and running for years, I could be crushing this. All right. So I'm just, I'm motivated. Now I've got a new, whole new skill set I can develop. Oh, that's wonderful. So we will see you back next year in the elite oh, division yeah. right here. It's going to be on the top of that leaderboard, <laughs> not the fourth position, but the, <laughs> the first position. That is the, uh, the, the lead position, shall we say. Sure. However, uh, Wonderful effort, great stretch run. You gathered yourself. You made you made your family proud for being out here. Um, thank you for being out here. We we look forward to having you back. Um, I just want to thank my sponsors, Athletic Brewing, Under Armour, the Beer Mile. You guys are great. Great event. Thanks for having me. Wonderful job. And TP and Will will break down all of uh, your laps in just a few minutes. All right. What did I tell you? Neve, the consummate competitor, does not like to lose. I'm coming back, and I'm going to be at the top of that leaderboard. Uh, but for those of you at home who aren't exactly sure how to chug the beer the best as possible, TP did a breakdown for us in something that we are calling the art of chugging. In the world of those who can do, those who can't teach, I'm here to educate you on the art of the chug. Anyone can slam a beer. But it's another story when you're staring down three angry barrels of malted barley and hops. There are three key factors. One, top athletes decelerate down the last 100 meters and begin to control their breath. Two, after grabbing your beer, most take an exhale or a modest inhale, slowly angle up the bottle, standing completely upright with shoulders back. Three, walking towards the finish line, slowly tip the bottle up, allowing for a continuous pour without causing the beer to churn, which will reduce foaming. Ideally, you want to avoid bringing your beer up and down and doing it all in one slug. Finally, upon chugging, athletes drop their beers bottom down into the receptacle before starting on the next lap, slowly accelerating and outgassing. Typically, your fastest part of the race is from 75 meters to the 300 meter mark. Then it's a suffer fest all the way home. Well, I hope that was helpful for the people at home because it, there is a little bit of an art to this. It's not easy. I'm not kidding. Everyone thinks, oh yeah, this is like, I can slam a beer. We've had people show up uh, in, what was it, 2016 or 2017, we had the Beer Mile World Championships in London uh, at the same time as the World Championships. And we had people that actually ran in the World Championships trying to come into our race. Like, no, no, I should be in the championship heat. Championship heat. I'm, a, I'm a pro. I'm like, yeah, no, we're not going to let you in. And as you see, when you have amateurs out there doing it, have not really experienced what it's like to put four pounds, four pounds of fluid in your stomach in a short amount of time. 
Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it, it's completely different. You know, that, it's why it's called the beer mile. It's one part beer, one part mile. Uh, I myself am abysmal at chugging, so I could learn a thing or two from that video and watching these men and women out here tonight who are the absolute peak of professional. Uh, you know, there's, there's just there's nothing. You can't escape the foamy burp. I can't escape it. Third beer every time it's coming up. I'm revisiting, almost like I'm at a fine wine taste. Let me revisit that beer that I just drank about 15 seconds ago. Yeah, unfortunately, the acid reflux that comes with that just doesn't quite have the same palate that you'd get uh, revisiting a, uh, a fine wine like that. Yeah, maybe we can get an acid in here next year. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we, we, we'll, yeah we'll, we'll, we'll see about that. But I think we're going we're gonna to cut away here in just a moment to um, – someone's going to give us a live example of um, – what the beer chug is, and that's going to be a guy named Corey Gallagher, who was one of the all-time greats. He's he's retired, just like me. I moved off the track into the booth. He's our uh, he's our race official today, uh, but he is one of the masters at chugging. So we'll have him on camera here in a second. But um, yeah, the other the other part is that you just have at the it's like at the eight minute mark. There's just this weird euphoric feeling that you have when it when it all hits you at the same time. It's just like ooh, the lights go dim. Yeah, I'm, you know, like a, a, a strong night of drinking is three or four drinks, and these athletes are putting this down in about four to seven minutes. So, uh, yeah, you got to imagine that that wave, when it comes and hits you, that is a tsunami of fun. Yeah, and I think, I, I think we have our, uh, our live sample chugger um, ready to go. So, If you're wondering what a professional beer chug actually looks like, I am here with former Beer Mile world record holder Corey Gallagher, all the way from Winnipeg. Corey, you want to show the crowd what they're missing in the professional field? Yep. Now, not only do we have Corey, Cynthia just finished her race and is ready to go. Cynthia, let's so do some work. You call the race for Corey. You got it. Are you ready, Corey? I'm ready. All right. On your mark. Ready? Set? Chug. We have a left-handed open, a Belgian ale for a Canadian, a 105-degree angle. He's almost done, folks. Three, two, one. Crushed it. And there you have it, quick and dirty, tight and neat. Corey Gallagher, Cynthia Freeland. That's how you chug a beer. Back to you guys, Travis and Will. It's an excellent, that was an excellent chug right there. <laughs> it's just like My mind is blown. I mean, that's what separates the pros from the Joes, right? We're, yeah, we're talking five seconds. It's basically the terminal velocity you can get out of a bottle right there. I don't think I could pour out a beer that fast. Yep. Um, well, we just want to cut away for a minute. We are going to talk about one of our sponsors, Long Run Coffee, and then we're going to give an intro to the Legends race coming up next. <laughs> This is my long run coffee because of the electrolytes. Oh, no way. Can you make me some? In a battle at the estuary of legends and emerging elites, we will see the past try to hold off the future as the raging river of youth smashes into the steady, rhythmic sea of experience. The Legends race features some of the all-time greats. Todd Rose, John Markle, whom you all know, but also has Andy Norman out of the UK, who's really helped grow the sport there, as well as Jim Finlayson, who holds the Masters Beer Mile record, as well as the Beer Two Mile record, and Sven Eriksson from Sweden, who holds the world record in the men's mile and 3,000. Next up, the Legends and Elite section will take on the Beer Mile. They bear the scars of many tartan battles. They hold the memory of kinder days away from the friction and heat of frantic competition. They have struggled to find past form and question decisions of today. Yet before you stand gladiators who have yet again answered the calls of competition. They are the emerging stars and established legends of the sport. Newbies with gleaming potential and cunning elders ready to scream, I'm not dead yet. 
Let us raise a toast to the legends and elites of the Beer Mile as they press their supple lips against the froth of life itself with esophageal fortitude in an unyielding battle across 5,280 feet of terrain. Please welcome the field for the legends and elites. Better? Oh, wow. So uh, I'm super excited about this next race, largely for the fact that, um, you know, I've been part of this sport for almost 10 years right now. And we've got some of the all all time greats in this race. Um, there's gonna be a formal introduction here in a minute. But you have like Jim Finlinson, who is just a consummate. Like he's the he's original world record holder. He is the Masters record, world record holder out of Canada. He's also was the two, the beer two mile record holder. I mean, this guy just has you know, a huge pedigree and was so fundamental to the sport. And he's still, he, he's 50 now. He's still, he's still going after it. Who, uh, who do you like in this race? You know, I almost want to call this, the, the people who aren't the legends, it's sort of like the weekend warriors of beer miling. And, you know, in the early heats, we saw calf sleeves. Now we see opening gloves. Right, it's like these these men and women know exactly what they've come here to do, which is chug four beers and run four laps. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing actually a man that I used to compete against in college, Reed Lyon, um, representing the That's Fine Track Club and our great United States of America. Reed, never really that great of a runner in college, uh, representing Claremont Mud Scripts, but has found his niche. He was the three-time defending John H. Armstrong Beer Mile Champion at Pomona College, my great alma mater. But uh, you know, I want to see what he's into. He's, uh, he's uh, already come up with a couple of excuses, which is classic Reed, right? The Achilles not doing so great. It's like, duh, dude, you're knocking on the door of 40. You can't just wake up in the morning and go run a beer mile, which is exactly what he did on Tuesday. He told me his time, which it will remain a secret. I told him it was a vault, but I'm really excited to see what he can put down today. Yeah, a big question I have in the field right now is like just with all the logistical problems, we, uh, we're missing one of our Australian competitors because don't forget, now it's not just the legends that are in this race. We also have our, um, our B elites, the people that didn't quite make the championship race, but they still count. So this is a team competition. So, uh, so do, do pay attention to these runners. They're probably coming uh, you know, ahead of some of these legends. Like you got Andy Norman in this race. Like what he has been instrumental in growing the sport for us. I mean, if we've lost an Australian, just don't forget, he did come from a land down under. Fair point, fair point. <laughs> we can see on the track as the athletes are shaking out some of the nerves. You can see that, that all that energy, this, the work, the time, the workouts, the hard reps, the hard yards in the bars, the hard yards in the track um, that these men and women have put into preparing themselves. Also, note, this is the first race of the day where we're seeing competitors with their own select Beers. These are handpicked by the competitors per all of Beer Mile official regulations, minimum 5% alcohol. Um, so you got some of the king of beers, you've got some Heineken's. Uh, you know, it's again, and as TP, as you pointed out, almost all bottles out there. Yeah, that's yeah, that's that's where that's one of the biggest things that separates the the amateurs from the elites is it just comes out a lot faster. Now you do have a couple of these you know, all-time greats still doing cans too. You got. Um, you know, Todd Rose was the king of the cans for a long time. Is a can, is that like the ultimate beer mile flex? It's yeah, like I mean, if you're, if, you're tr if you're throwing down a can and you're running sub five, yeah, you're, you're kind of swinging big there. All right, so you just mentioned a time. I was sort of avoiding that because, you know, we do have, th there are some breezes out here, uh, which as a former runner, I know that does affect things. You think we might see a sub five in this race? Ooh, this race, uh, yeah, I, I don't know, because I don't know who some of these open guys are. It's a pretty, pretty fair field out there. I think the, the lowest, uh, well, if you're going to talk an all-time PR, Jim Finlayson's 501. Uh, but I would probably say we're looking at probably around 520s. But we're going to kick it over to, we'll kick it over to Josh here in just a few seconds. Um, one of the other people I want to call out, you know, with this weather, you know, it, fortunately the rain's kind of held off, you know, Jeff Mountjoy guy's a lumberjack out of Canada. I think he's the one who caused all this smoke. <laughs> yeah, shout out to Jeff. Thanks a lot, pal. Uh, again, one thing to note, you're seeing all sorts of com country pride worn across the chest of these competitors. We've got USA, we've got Sweden, we've got Australia, Canada, Great Britain, Belgium. Uh, I, I, I gotta say, I shed a single tear when I saw the last Beer Mile World Classic was held in Leuven, Belgium. Um, a track that I've done so many workouts on in the summer when competing on the European circuit. 
is a very, it's, it's actually the name of my dog. My dog's name is Leuven, and so it uh, holds a soft spot in my heart. But yeah, well, let's, uh, let's kick it down to Josh here and give us the last bit of intro. Friends and family, please welcome to the start line these glorious competitors of today's legends and elite section. I'd like to welcome the team from Australia. Team Belgium. And from Team Canada, let us welcome the former world record holder in the beer mile and the beer two mile, Jim Findlayson. The godfather of the beer mile, the owner of the Kingston Rules, John Sparkle Markle. From Team Great Britain, welcome the team captain, Andy Norman. From Team Sweden, let us please welcome the age group world record holder in a number of events, the one and only Hawken Erickson. And Team USA is here. Represented by a gentleman prepared to battle the 50 plus world record, Todd Rose. And Olympian and 5,000 meter American record holder, Shelby Houlihan. These are your competitors for the elites and legends division of today's Beer Mile World Classic. Travis and Will, back to you for more. All right, so we've got our legends field out there. This is uh, this is going to be a fun race. I think it's um, I'm I'm pretty pumped. I, yeah, I, there's there's so many question marks in the starting line for me that uh, I, I don't even know where to begin. I don't know where to begin. You got you know the one of the very fun things also these competitors can qualify for points, which we're doing cross country scoring towards the overall team title, which is th their top three men and top two women. So. Very exciting to see. There's, there's more on the line in this race than beholds the eye. Uh, how they perform here can have repercussions into the later events of the day. Well, what's awesome here is I do see Blanche. He did make it. That guy was sleeping under a, uh, a, bar, a, a bar in San Diego at the airport because, yeah, well, he missed his flight. It's uh, one of those things that uh, just comes par for the course when it comes to uh, uh, comes old Blanche there. And here I thought you were saying he was discovered underneath a bar in San Diego, and that's where he found his beer mile prowess. But no, he was found there because he missed his flight. Yeah, <laughs> well, the legend of uh, legend of him lives on. Uh, let's see if uh, I, I don't even know if he's had any sleep. Who needs sleep when yeah. you got a beer mile? So just a quick note, though, um, as mentioned, there's two people, Todd Rose and, and uh, Jim Finlayson, that are going to be chasing down the seniors record. Um, there actually isn't really one recorded, so I, I guarantee you whatever, whatever gets, gets settled here will be the new, the new seniors record, as well as Sven, uh, Sven Erickson going for the super seniors record. Uh, he's 60 plus, so, uh, and he does have, you know, he does have the indoor um, seniors record for the 1500 and the outdoor 3000. So he's actually a pretty fast guy for his age. Also, it caught me off guard when they said that Finland said has the beer two mile record. That's eight beers, eight laps. It's That's still the master's record. That's an correct. And insanity. I think we're going we're to cut away here pretty soon to the, uh, the start here. I think they're still probably doing a little bit of pre-race stuff. He's kind of just going over a few things. So but they are getting staged up on the line. Love these drone shots. Shug! All right, we didn't have the quote away there, but there we are out on this. You're going to see some of the best chuggers in the world here. Look at that. Right out, right out of the gate, the guy from Belgium right there. I probably said that was about a six-second or just a little bit faster uh, f faster first beer there. That was uh, it's pretty smooth. That was uh, Jonas De Watcher. I'm not sure whether this is a popular opinion here, but I'm a firm believer that Belgium makes the best beer in the world. So, uh, mate, light work of the king of beers saw that Belgium take that down. AB InBev, now a Belgian beer. Um, 
you know, hometown proud for that guy. Yeah, so we are in the first lap, and it is going out pretty hot. We want to see if we get an inside pass here. The inside lane is open. I'm unsure if this is a tactical maneuver by our Belgian compatriot, um, but the American athlete's saying, hey, pal, just tuck it. Come on, come on. I'm either going inside or I'm outside. Outside or I'm, I'm, I'm inside. Oh, goodness, I'm catching up my words here. Yeah, well, you know, I've had a few myself, so it's, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's quite all right. I think that's Aaron McLemore, but I couldn't quite get the number. Macklemore, the rapper, out here uh, with a, about 80 <laughs> meters to go. Uh, he's opening up a pretty quick lead here. I'd probably say he's got, what, about a good 10-meter lead right now? That was a pretty good first lap. You know, I think that there's some strategy taking play here where some of the athletes are slowing themselves down as they approach that beer transition. Um, you know, sort of just like a, in a triathlon when they're and getting off the bike and into the run. And I'm sorry, that's actually Bud Lightning. <laughs> Bud Lightning right there. He's out to a quick lead. That's actually one of the best chugs I've seen him do. He struggled a little bit. He came to the uh, the U.S. championships that we had here in Chicago a year ago. Um, didn't have his best effort. Uh, so this is a, a marked improvement over where he was a year ago. Obviously, he's been thinking about that race for the last 365 days, just like Happy Gilmore, toughening himself up, chiseling through the rigors of training, and showing himself to be a master of the beer mile at this point. Uh, with 200 meters remaining to go in this lap, no signs of slowing down. Uh, honestly, I think he's speeding up. He's excited for that third beer. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. And the rest of the field, I think Reed Line was uh, right in the caboose right now. That does not surprise me, honestly. Uh, Reed, I think he's, he's more trying to wait for that sit and kick mentality. Um, he knows exactly where he is. As I said, he did a hard beer mile on Tuesday, so he's, I think he's probably adequately pacing himself. But right now, it's, uh, <laughs> it's a one-person story. Hey, I'm telling you, though, Bud here might have a shot at breaking five. He's got he's to pick it up a little bit. It just, we'll see how his chugs goes. He's a little slow to put the thing up. We'll see. Otherwise, I will probably say he's going to draw. That's a good chug. That was excellent. You, you know, sometimes you got to ask yourself the question, is this a real name or is this an alias? Bud Lightning. The name's almost too good for, <laughs> to be believed in the rules of beer miling. Oh, yeah. And he's out there. And uh, Belgium's still right there in second. Yeah, Jonas de Vachter is, uh, I, I'd say that the distance between these two athletes has not changed substantially over the last couple of laps, but Bud is really just hammering through these beers and hammering down the backstretch. Um, again, just showing the world that in God we trust. Well, you got Will and uh, Andy Norman as well uh, making up the, the, the tail end. And there goes Sven uh, making his way towards the, uh, towards the next beer, but this is, a, this is a sizable lead. He's up, what, about 70 meters now? This now, is a and folks, these aren't replays that you're seeing on the screen. This is just how metronomic Bud has been from the outset of this race. He's uh, making light work of this. Again, I think he's accelerating into the final 100 rather than trying to catch his breath. He has one beer and one lap remaining. And again, I just think he's excited. I think he knows that he's on to something absolutely special. As 344, 345, that's five minute pace. Come on, Bud, what do you got in you? He's going to have to, he, at this point, he's going to have to run probably about a 60 flat by the time he gets his beer down. Let's see, he's got, uh, yeah, he's going to have to run a 62. We need a 62. 62. Come on, bud. Get Come going. On, bud. Let's go. Let's go, buddy. Let's go. He's got the Suck breeze right on his nose. He's got the crowd in the, in, on his back, breathing and powering him down. And, oh, I, I honestly think, I think Belgium may have made up some time in that transition. He took a couple deep breaths before stomaching that beer. But he, he, bud is looking strong. He is looking really strong. I'm curious where we stand for the next, uh, the next battle in the back here, because I'm still curious about uh, about Todd Rose. Is he gonna is he gonna take the uh, the Masters record? Is it gonna be Jim? And it looks like Jim's the one in the lead right now when it comes to the uh, the 50 plus the se uh, the seniors. With about 150 meters to go, you can see a noticeable change. I think that he's going to be just over the five-minute mark, but he is giving absolute everything that he has. Bud Lightning with 100 meters to go. Oh, boy. He's probably looking at about a 502, 503, somewhere right around there. But this is – that's a great push. He has got some great turnover. This is impressive to watch. He actually might get it. He's going to be right at the line. Oh! oh! Five minutes flat. Oh, that was excellent. What a race. Bud's trying to prove the meat directors that they put him in the wrong heat. We might see that as one of the top American times today. That was absolutely incredible. Um, as the other finishers are coming across the line, there's our Belgian finisher coming in second. And we have a slurry of racers coming across the finish we'll line right now. right there, yep. 
cut. John Markle's still on the track, the old godfather right there. Not in form that he's been in the past. He has knee surgery. And you get Jim Finlinson coming in. I think that's going to be the now standing seniors record. Oh, wow. And Shelby Houlihan are just completely screaming down that stretch right there. Let's see what time she pulls in. Andy Norman at 5.32, Joan Markle, 5.33. As we approach the six minute mark, again, competitors continue to stream across that shared finish line in glory <laughs> and pain and discomfort and, and absolutely uh, having throttled themselves over the last six minutes. Uh, we heard Ken Rideout earlier say that this was more difficult than a marathon, just to put that in perspective from one of the toughest competitors on the track today. But we're gonna go down to Mux with a winner with our winner today. Folks, we are here on the track. You saw a tremendous performance from Team USA, led by the one and only Bud Lightning, Bud. What a spectacular adventure out there on the Blue Oval today. Talk us through the critical second and third beers. Oh man, you know, I did a tune-up on Thursday and the running felt good, but I was just coming in too, too slow on the chugging exchanges. And so today I just really focused on just like, you don't need a full breath, man. Just chug, you want the beer. You've wanted the beer all week. There it is. You gotta want it, you gotta taste it, you gotta swallow it. So all of you wanna be chuggers out there, bud. Any other advice for folks watching it at home? Uh, oh, spend most of your college career hurt. <laughs> oh, there it is. Wonderful job, big round of applause. Your winner in the legends and elite section of today's event, Bud Lightning! Thanks guys, this was awesome. <laughs> what a great race. That was fantastic. Keep in mind that this is not an official time yet. We still have the measurements, so people still have the opportunity to be disqualified. I don't quite know if I heard anybody booting in, uh, in that race, but there's still, you know, there's still you know, opportunity there. Now we're going to uh, we're gonna go to some highlights of the day and of that race right now. All right, so you see there's just a quick finish. Good little battle right up at the beginning. Again, Bud Lightning, I, he must be drinking Bud Platinum. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure those are those are Platinums. It is one of the preferred uh, preferred uh, beers of choice amongst the, uh, the elite runners. The creme de la creme, as we would say. Uh, but again, this is Bud Lightning coming with 100 meters to go and crossing the finish line there in what he is obviously proud of his effort out there today, um, dismantling that Legends field. All right, well, what, what, <laughs> what an exciting race. I can't wait to see the, uh, the final results here. We, I mean, we had a quasi-football celebration there at the end. Just, big let's old, go. Big old chest bumps and everything else. It's, uh, it's great. So we, we, it might take a minute uh, to get the actual official, uh, official results there. So we will wait. Um, there is a possibility. All right, there is a possibility that we could have a couple of world records that fell there. Um, we did have Shelby run pretty quick. We're waiting for official on that. We need to get uh, get an official measurement on Markle. All right, we're gonna throw it to Josh on the track for a quick interview. Folks, I've got great news to bestow upon you. You have been a wonderful gift. Individuals who have been here, traveled here from near and far have seen something only few have can imagined. Today, for the first time in world history, six minutes has been broken by a female contestant. Not only is that a world record, it was absolutely demolished in her very first competitive beer mile ever. World record holder and newly crowned champion of the Legends and Elite race, Shelby Hulan. Shelby, talk us through, first your decision, which beer did you go with in today's event? I went with Budweiser, I've been practicing and that was the one that sat well in my stomach for one time and I was like, nope, that's it, I'm gonna, go do, I'm gonna do that, so. So superstitious with the Bud Heavy, you went out there, was there any point when you thought, uh, I regret this decision? No, 
honestly, it was like really fun. I think like running past all the puke spots though was a little nerve wracking. I was trying not to look at them, but uh, no, I had a great time and I just like, I felt really good and everything kind of was clicking. So it was great. Well, congratulations. It's fantastic to have you out here. Congrats on the world record. One more time for all of you who have seen history made here today. World record, Shelby Houlihan, 12, excuse me, 543. Come on. All right, that was uh, quite exciting right there. So I'm going to say that officially we know we're going to have probably two world records if Jim's, uh, Jim's time holds up as well. But we've got coming up, that just put a new gauntlet down for the, the championship women's race. So they're going to be chasing a new record. It is a great field. You've got Elizabeth Laster. You've got uh, Allison Grace Morgan. It's, it's, you know, it's a new bar, but uh, they're going to chase after it there. Uh, but we do want to give a shout-out to another one of our sponsor, uh, sponsors, All Work. You came into my nature, the stronger the flavor, the more I can feed the power of my inner hunger to my lotus. <laughs> You came into my nature, the stronger the flavor, the more I can feed the power of my inner hunger to my lotus. World record holder and three-time champ, Allie Grace Morgan seeks redemption in this year's Beer Mile World Classic after a DQ in last year's event. Melanie Paulsdell from Chicago is the defending champ and has no plans to give up the title quietly. Elizabeth Lassiter, if given a fighting chance, may usurp both for the crown. After crossing the line in a world record time in 2022, she was DQ'd on a technicality that few, if any, actually understood. There is no doubt on the favorites for the women's team title. The Americans are a beer-guzzling juggernaut set on flexing their livers against all competition. The only thing standing in the way of an American podium sweep is the unpredictability of the English who hope to set a blazing pace that puts pressure on the USA. Stay tuned for the women's championship section, up next. Today, dear spectators, we bear witness to an unparalleled display of prowess where extraordinary competitors embody the pinnacle of physicality and embark upon an audacious quest for libation. With grace and fortitude, they navigate the precarious tightrope of swiftness and consumption, thrusting the boundaries of human potential into unfathomable heights. This epithelial moment, the converse of scientific marvels and cultural wonders illuminates the tapestry of our shared humanity, capturing the very essence of our existence. Raise your glasses, my esteemed companions, for this symphony of speed and frothy splendor is about to commence. In this hallowed arena, we bear witness to the summit of human achievement, where dreams are realized and legends are born. Let us welcome the competitors of the Women's Beer Mile World Colossus! All right, well, now we're, now we're at the meat of the show. We are at the championship race here. This is the Women's World Championships. It's both team and individual. I'm really excited. There's, this is the deepest women's field we've had. Um, <laughs> we've got the USA chance already going on. This is, this is going to be epic. I mean, there's got to be something to strengthen numbers, right? We just saw a world record run in the last race, which I will qualify that athlete had some advantages of being able to run with guys. I mean, she was running with, with men who are pushing the entire way. However, I think these women are going to do some absolute lightning on the track. But we have a gaggle of American women out there hell-bent on defending their title, and the USA chants are reverberating through the stadium. That's right. And we have a couple profiles we're going to run here real quick. So we just want to give a little bit of background on last year's world champion, Melanie Posdall. I'm Melanie Posdell, I'm from Chicago, and I'm the reigning Beer Mile World Champion. I run with a group called Fleet Feet Racing Team here in Chicago, and they always tend to do beer miles for fun, and I practically begged one of the coaches to set up a beer mile. I just knew that a lot of running teams typically do beer miles for fun at the end of the season, and I had always really wanted to do one. It sounded really exciting to me. I just found that it was 
so much fun being able to see like how fast I could chug and basically run with the dudes who like are always crushing me in workouts. <laughs> I just hope to have fun. Um, I hope to run a strong race and also just feel proud about the race that I run. Being able to run, run strong um, would be my best outcome. And if that means that I am on the podium somehow, awesome. If that means that I'm at the back of the pack or disqualified, fine. I just want to be proud and I want um, to make the people of Chicago and all my friends and family proud. Yeah, we'll get this. We got you. Line up by country. Uh, so this is 50. Right. So we have the uh, the women's field coming up here in just a moment. The um, I was at Belgium last year and watched that entire race. And really, it's probably going to be a three three horse race. You have Melanie Paulsdale, who's probably the best chugger out of this group. Then you have Alice Grace Morgan has the best foot speed. I watched her at the uh, U.S. Championships here in Chicago last year. Absolutely destroyed the field on the last lap. I mean, she just cooked. Uh, didn't didn't uh, didn't perform as well as she wanted to at Leuven last year. Uh, but then uh, then you have Elizabeth Lasseter, who's the best end to end, like puts the entire thing together perfectly. So it's really anybody's race at this time. You know, you just gotta hope that we avoid a disaster like last year, right? The disaster <laughs> was uh, detrimental, I think, to the, to the team morale, and also, you, know, you can hear it in those interviews where it's, the, it's about pride, right? It's about putting yourself out there, having a great race, and being able to stand up at the end and just say, like, I gave it my best. So, um, before we hit this women's race, we're gonna go into one more sponsor ad, um, which I believe right now is for Two Brothers. You came into my nature, the stronger the flavor, the more I could feed the power of my inner hunger to my lotus. <laughs> You came into my nature, the stronger the flavor, the more I could feed the power of my inner hunger to my lotus. Folks, it is my pleasure to introduce the competitors for today's field in the Women's Beer Mile World Classic Championship. I'd like you to welcome all the way from across the pond, Team Belgium! Our neighbors to the north, represented by the one and only Katie Anderson, Team Canada! Finding their way back to America, Team Great Britain. From the snowy fields from afar, let us welcome Team Sweden. And as it should be on home soil, we have two teams representing the great United States today. Let us give it up for USA Team B. And representing the top of the pyramid for Team USA, three-time world champion and world record holder, Allie Grace Morgan. She originally won the race in 2022 in a world record time, only to be harshly DQ'd when chugging out of the zone. Elizabeth Lassiter. And hailing from Chicago, Defending world champion, the love of your life, Manny Pozzo. Friends, families, fans, and fanatics, your field for the women's division of the Beer Mile World Classic. All right, so we've got the women's field out there. They're gonna, they're gonna start this race here any moment now. 
We've got former world record holders, current world record holders, world champions, defending national champions. We've got com country pride on the line. There is just so much riding on this one race. I, I mean, you can just see the anticipation. Yeah, this is great. I think they're grabbing their beers right now, getting ready for that first big chug. This is, this is exciting right here. All right. Judges, are you ready? Timers, are you ready? Ladies, are you ready? Runner set, chug! All right, who's gonna come out first on this first chug? I guarantee you Laura Richies will be in first place at the end of this first lap. She is an epic burner right at the beginning. Sure enough, she's out there with the first beer and she will scream through this first lap. Team she does GB. have a problem though. She has never qualified because she keeps getting DQ'd. She does not finish her beers and she's had a couple of reversal of fortunes, but does she get redemption? I didn't, I didn't call her out at the beginning just because I wanted this to be a surprise to the, uh, the new viewers out there, but she will open up a big lead here. Oh my goodness, yeah. I mean, came out, like shot out of a cannon. Team GB had the first two athletes off the line with Team USA hot on their heels, but you gotta love to see that, you know, putting down the beers in about seven seconds and absolutely attacking this first lap. And hot on their heels is our own world record holder, uh, Allison Morgan. Yeah, she's, she looks really smooth. Right behind her is Melanie Posdall and, and Elizabeth Lassiter, all in that fine group. So the Americans are in really good position to retake or to take uh, this year's championship. Let's see, uh, let's see where we go through this next beer. They're coming down the straightaway right now. And Allison Grace Morgan is, has an interesting, uh, interesting chug style. So you'll see this kind of two-handed thing that she does here. Clearly effective. Yeah, yeah of course. What I will also note is that if it didn't come through in the broadcast, the Chicagoland fans here were going absolutely bonkers for Melanie Pazdal. She is a crowd favorite, fan favorite. They loved her oh, here. We the got local Elizabeth hero. Lassiter right out, right out in. And she's got a nice big lead right there. She is at 140. It's well behind world record pace right now, but she runs a different style. This was based off of Allison Grace's more Allison Grace Morgan's former world record. Uh, obviously, that's been broken today. So I would say that we are behind world record pace across the board at this point, but it is still an impressive run right now. And that is a big lead. You know, when someone runs a world record, maybe that is out of their minds for their race. They're just thinking, just go out and compete, win this dang thing with USA blazing across your chest. And that's exactly what Elizabeth Lasseter is doing now, trying to go back and rewrite the books from last year. Well, it's Canada Day right now, but I'm saying it's all USA right now. Absolutely. USA holding down positions one, two, three, with Team GB occupying the fourth and sixth positions. Listen to those chants as the athletes round under the banner with 100 meters to go in every lap. The fans are absolutely loving this as USA is dominating this women's championship. Wow, I am, I am really surprised right now at how, I thought it was going to be a tighter race. This is a, she's putting on a clinic right now. This is a dominating performance. Let's see how she does with her beers. She is a strong chugger. She is really oh. good. Oh, she's got a little bit of foam there. That's going to be a problem. Oh, come on. Oh, no. Nope. She, oh, nope. that's, nope. she has a, this could be disaster for her. The worst thing that can happen. This is, she does have an unusual chugging style where she goes up, down, up, down, up, down. That does cause a lot of churn in the bottle, but that's still pretty quick. I don't think, well, hopefully the judges won't, uh, won't, Docker for the uh, for the foam up on that because that was not out of her stomach and she didn't turn it over. That thing just foamed up. You can't control that. But Allison Grace Morgan made up a bit of time on that chug. She does have incredible foot speed, so I don't know. It's it, it's still it's not put away yet. The chugging form of Allison Grace Morgan clearly superior to that of Elizabeth Lassiter, but Elizabeth continues to put distance between herself and a pursuant Allison as they go down the back stretch. I think that her laps are going to be quicker, but again, it's this all powerful, all important, and can't get away from it fourth beer that looms in the distance for both of these athletes. Yeah, she's actually really opened up on Allison Grace. That is, uh, she is a woman on a mission trying to redeem herself from what happened last year. This is impressive. Absolutely, and it does appear as though the weather gods are shining down upon us here today as Elizabeth Lassiter turns and burns. She's got a nice little tailwind here on the home stretch, coming into this last and fourth beer. 
in what could be her first official. We gotta wait for the results. World Championship. All right, she's into that last beer. It's this up and down. This one didn't foam up like the last one. She's probably in good shape. She's just gotta get it down the gullet. It doesn't appear as though there's much, uh, she's not struggling with the beer so much as it's just like, whoa, we really, really got to get it down. That she's up and down, is, it's just its just not efficient. Yeah, it's not efficient. She's got a state mall. She's got to make sure she's staying on the line. And oh, there we go. She's making sure, she's yes. just doing a double check. Doing a double check, but she is out. She is out right now. That is a big lead. I do not see Allison, even with her amazing foot speed, being able to make that close. This race is over. And you hope we don't have another technicality at the finish line because <laughs> Elizabeth Lasseter is pouring herself all of her being into this last lap and into this race. She has absolutely steamrolled this field. This is a dominating performance by Team USA across the board, but on the individual level. I am amazed right now. This is what we came here to see. This is what the fans came here to see. And as she turns this corner, turns and burns, again, you're gonna hear these home country fans giving her everything that she needs for a PR performance and probably what would be if it weren't for the previous race that we just witnessed, a world record. Oh yeah, I'm, I, we, she is right on pace for it. She is, uh, she's got 30 seconds to, <laughs> to, to, uh, to finish this last 100 meters. This is an impressive run. The fans are letting her hear it. She's got 50 meters to go. We got Toga men and women and <laughs> the, the frat boys in the pool cheering her home for a victory. And there we have it. That shaved off 13 seconds off of what was the old record. That is a absolute dynamite performance right there. As Allie Grace Morgan, she's making her way in the, into the finish line, not far off her personal best. And then we have the hometown favorite, Melanie Pazdal. So that is a one, two, three Team USA finish. Absolutely spectacular. And what I love to see is, as we saw Elizabeth Lasser across the line, a fellow competitor who was struggling getting through her fourth beer, putting that race fist in the air, cheering on her country women. Uh, just what a great event today across the board. Yeah, and right behind her was Casey. So look at there, like, look at the camaraderie. A lot of smiles there by Team USA. <laughs> what, what dominance right now. Not a lot that you can say that wasn't already said in the pre-show to this. Uh, that prelude just absolutely extolling the virtues of our American women beer milers. Yeah, and so you probably have Team uh, Team GBR right there, right behind. Uh, the Swedes are still out on the course. They put together a good team as well. Uh, you know, not not to uh, not to look past them. But Laura Riches didn't quite have the race that we were hoping she'd have today. She finished in uh, seven minutes there. Um, yeah, it's what 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 a fun race. This is uh, this was amazing. I just hope the men's race that's coming up is going to be, you know, th this, this entertaining. We'll probably see that type of dominance by Corey, but, you know, who knows? Maybe there's a new hero that shows up out of nowhere. Who knows? A stage has been set for the performance that the fans are expecting from these pinnacle athletes, these beer milers, best beer milers in the world, beer, beer mile men and women. As some of our final competitors in this women's championship event are crossing the finish line, still receiving the cheers of this Adelaide crowd. Wow, and we're seeing the results come in. I didn't really hear any big clamor from the uh, from the gallery out there about any of these uh, girls booting, but I think we're going to be cutting away here in just a moment here for, uh, I'm going to kick it over to Josh for an uh, interview on the field. Folks, it is a tremendous honor to stand next to the Beer Mile Women's Champion, the World Champion. Today, you saw one of the fastest beer miles ever run, full stop. And we are here with Liz Lassiter. Congratulations on your win, Liz. We know it hurt, but how did it hurt so good? It always hurts, but it extra hurt this time. And I had a blast, I, I love this event. I love my teammates, I love the community. I'm so thankful for this event and everyone who puts it on every year. I know a lot of work goes into it and it gets better and better every year. Now Liz, we were watching the clock. That six minute barrier is so, so close. Was it ever in your mind coming into this event that you would get so close to breaking six minutes? It was not, but anything can happen on a day like today. So if it does happen, that's, that's incredible. But this event's so unpredictable, but today just kind of all fell into place. 
and tell us about the crowd. What was going on with the uh, with the crowd today? You can still hear them clamoring in the background. How did they play a role in your win? Yeah, I mean, the crowd is incredible today. Like, so many people came out. I, that's incredible. I love that so much. But when you're racing, you kind of block out everything. So I didn't really hear much of anything, but like to see all these people here is incredible. So I, it gives me so much energy and I love it. Well, congratulations, Liz. Whether you were able to block them out, that they could never forget this moment that you gave to them. World Beer Mile Classic Women's Champion, Liz Lassiter! All right, so that's right. You have Elizabeth Lassiter, the current and now reigning world champion. That cannot be taken away from her. Well, we, I think the measurements probably came through. I think it's all clean. This is the rest of the field. You have, like, Catherine from USA. You have Chris and Kadala uh, out of San Francisco make, making the trip, running more towards the caboose. But it's still, it's still fun to see this entire field. Um, Polly Keene. Top runner from uh, top runner from the GBR, as well as uh, Marissa Markle, the top runner from Canada, and Frida from uh, Team Sweden. So great field there. All right, so this is the uh, start of the race. As we mentioned, Laura Rich is out really, really quick. Uh, it was kind of fun to watch. But then, there you go. There's Elizabeth your Lassiter champion. absolutely powered through that second beer. I mean, she made mincemeat of that. And all of these preceding beers, I mean, they, they didn't seem to go down easy. And we could see in that post-race interview that she was happy to win, but struggling to keep that down the gullet, uh, celebrating nonetheless. But, man, it was all Liz Lassiter today. And Melanie Paul's all coming in there with the, with the third place finish. USA, one, two, three. Yeah, that was absolutely epic. I, yeah, I, I can't say enough about that. So... Uh, we're going to get ready for the men's race here in just a few minutes, but uh, we do want to hear from one of our sponsors, Two Brothers Brewing. I'm here with BeerMile.com. Today we're at Two Brothers Brewing in Warrenville, Illinois, and we're here to find the perfect beer mile beer. Let's go. Brendan McGrath, I'm operations manager here at Two Brothers. Been here 16 years, and uh, I got some beers to try. Did you ever think you would be working with anyone putting on a beer mile and working <laughs> on a beer mile beer? Was this uh, something you envisioned someday? No, it was not. <laughs> <laughs> Prairie Path here is uh, beer path. number two. It's, All right. Uh, yeah, it's a little lighter there. It's a golden ale. Much crisp, lighter. Uh, yeah. But it yeah. sounds smooth. So you, so you think the, the Prairie Path is the one? It might be the one. It might be the one. Let's go make some Prairie Path beer mile beer. Let's do it. day's work. Only thing left to do is to chug. Cheers. Smooth. Questions are asked about the limits of humanity and Corey Bellamore from Canada plans to answer the call. Will he establish yet another world record or will he wilt in the spotlight, allowing another to swipe the crown? Chris Robertson hails from Chicago and hopes to make his new daughter finally proud by winning the title. Lurking close is an ancient relic, Lewis Kent, the Canadian who won the very first Beer Mile World Classic. The claim to the men's team title will be settled once again at the 49th parallel. In this North American tilt, the Canadians have never lost on U.S. soil. And this year's race is on Canada Day. U.S. versus Canada. Will it be beavers or ball eagles? Stick around. In mere moments, the men's championship race is next on the track. Since the dawn of time, we have sought refuge in the fermentation of water, hops, and barley. The discovery of beer has given us blessed memories, wiped sorrow from our souls, and created avenues for us to ponder the mysteries of the universe. Life's amber nectar has 
and forever will be tied to the human condition. Today, we again combine ale, our constant companion in spirit, with our drive to bend the rules of the physical world. A soulful expedition across a mile of blue rubber, seeking a crown amongst the suds. Which of these athletes will land upon the champion's throne, giving those of us who bear witness to a memory to pass on to generations yet born? Which will lay meek and humble at the feet of the champion and capsize bottles? Only the race holds the answer. And to that, I present to you the challengers to the crown, the men of the Beer Mile, competing for the Beer Mile World Classic Champion of the World. All right. All right, here we are. We're at the main event. This is the men's championship race. It's what, well, everyone came to see the races too, but a lot of questions are out here right now. It's, do we get a new, new world record? Do we see a change in the team championship dynamic right now? Who shows up? What's, what's the delta this year? What, what's your thoughts? You know, Team Canada is coming out strong, right? They, they have, they got Corey. And they, uh, the man's name is escaping me, who's the, the old time, the original champion of this event. Um, but their team is very, very strong. But you gotta like the fact that we've got some hometown heroes in Chris Nickinson just getting ready to show out in front of this enormous crowd. Yeah, Chris, Chris Robertson's right here in front of his uh, hometown crowd. He's the one who helped put this thing together. I uh, couldn't have done it without him, but it's. Yeah, it's. They've had some pretty epic battles in their, in their, in their background. So. It really kind of keys off of Corey Belmore. Um, we've got a little intro reel about Corey right now. There is no finish line. So be hungry, but humble. And understand that work can always come before belief. The journey is the destination. You don't stop when you get there. First things first, rest in peace, suckers fear. You the only father that I ever knew I get my bitch credit, I'ma be a better you Prophecies that I made way back in the field For fear, listen, even back when we was broke, my team ill Martin Luther King would have been on Dreamville, talk to him all right, you got a good little intro there on Corey Belmore, the current world record holder at 428. The guy is an absolute barn burner. Discovered in 2016, a week before the Beer Mile World Classic in London, put out a put out a, a proof of uh, pr proof of race time. We flew him out. He comes out, runs fourth. Oh, it was 434, I think, was the current world record at the time. But even more impressive is he has got an unreal gear that is just completely different than everybody else. What was more impressive than that initial world record that he had, which he, he did lower, was the fact that 45 minutes later when we're doing the relays, he split a 55, which means he ran a 49 second, 400 meters after drinking a beer, after, w after setting a world record. Just an absolutely phenomenal specimen. I just, he is a, he's fit, he's healthy. What do you think he's going to be able to do today? I mean, he's just made claims that he's world record fit. So fit is fit. You know, these guys, uh, they don't come out here to play around. This is very serious. It's, it's, it may seem like a joke to some people watching this, but all of these competitors take this incredibly seriously. Uh, we saw Corey's brother win an earlier heat today. Mm -hmm. um, the Bellamore family has beer miling in their jeans. Uh, but we're just going to we're gonna throw this down to, to the start line for this men's championship race. It is my pleasure to now introduce the field for today's final event on the track, the men's division of the Beer Mile World Classic. Let us welcome all the way from down under, Team Australia. And it is my pleasure to also introduce Team Belgium, led by Tom Van Cable, a 515 beer miler himself from the great white north, Team Canada. 
Team Canada is led by four-time world champ and world record holder from 2016. He owns a personal best of 428 in the beer mile, Corey Bellamore! From the land of Vikings, let us welcome a team in Denmark! Led by Jacob Simonson, a 518 beer miler who recently set the world record for the stroller half marathon. And our competitors across the Atlantic, Team Great Britain. All the way from the neighbors to the north, Team Norway. Next to Team Norway, it would not be an event with the thematic energy of the Swedes. And your host country, who need no introduction from me, you know when to put your hands together for the red, white, and blue. Let's do it together, Team USA. Team USA will be led by two-time world champ, Chris Robertson. There you have it, friends, family. The Beer Mile World Classic men's competitive field. It's been a long time coming, but the moment is here. One more time, put your head together for the field of the century. All right, so we're getting ready for the start of this race. I love this field. There are just, you know, it's a tremendous one out there. You got people that actually probably belong on a firefighter count out there with, with Corey Bellmore and, uh, and Tom from, uh, from Belgium. Uh, but doesn't, it's not a matter of looking pretty, it's a matter of finishing pretty. Yeah, I was missing my notes a little bit earlier, TP, but we've got Corey Bellamore and Lewis Kent and Phil Perromigas, who are all sub five minute beer milers. That's, that's just one team. Three guys that have run sub five minutes. Uh, you know, Corey, <laughs> how do you know how good he is? The guy's in an Adidas pro racing kit out here. He's showing his true colors in that he is a consummate professional athlete doing what he does best, and that is the beer mile. All right, I think we're getting ready here for the start, so I think we'll just cut away to Cut away over to the race here. Yeah, let's let the pictures do the talking. Gentlemen, you know the deal. I'll start the race from here. The command will be runner, set, and chug. Everyone have their beer? Okay. Runner, set, chug! Now, I don't necessarily expect Corey to be in the lead right out of the chug, but yeah, that's, that's still pretty clean. Garrett Cullen usually has one of the fastest chugs of the entire field. No, oh, man got, down. We got one of the Great Britain runners down, the defending champions, taking an early spill. Don't know what impact that's going to have on team scoring later. Yes, Corey is just scorching the backside of the track. We He's barely have a drone fast enough to keep up with Corey <laughs> Bellamore. He's absolutely destroying this. Obviously a man on a mission. He is out here today to continue his dominance and put this mark even further out of reach of anybody else in the world. Well, he's gonna have to, he's gonna have to come through this lap and next beer in 110 to be on world record pace. So let's see what he's got. Let's see what he's got in the tank. Yeah, so TP's got the world record splits for us, but all you need to see is what's on the screen. And that is Corey Bellamore looking strong as an ox, fit and prepared for this challenge. The fans have their phones out. They know they're here for something special as Corey slows down to grab his beer, pops that bottle cap with his uh, opener. He's, he's gonna, he's gonna be ahead of world record pace right here. Right, right here, yep. yep. We Golly, are those on, beers go we down are fast. On world record pace, that is awesome. I can't quite see who's in second place right now, but we'll see it on the board here in just a moment when the splits come out. But that's a buck seven. He's three seconds under world record pace. Chris Robertson, hometown hero also right there in second place, running pretty well. It's not that far behind. It no. looks bad on the track, but he is running a pretty, pretty magnificent, magnificent time as well. No, it's an absolutely incredible first two beers and 400 meters from Chris Robertson. But right now, it's all Corey Bellamore. 
all Corey Bellamore. He doesn't appear to be slowing down at all. Each one of these laps, I know he gets out a little bit hard that first lap and sort of settles in the pace laps two and three, reserving that charge at the end for a massive fourth lap finish. But Corey Bellamore right now, I mean, I don't even think his breathing doesn't look labored. His face looks relaxed. He's got that opener in his hand like he's running a relay with a baton, TP. He's looking like he did in Vancouver when he got his world record of 424 disqualified. That was a sub four mile he ran. <laughs> All right, let's see where we are on world record pace right here. He needs to be under 218. Under 218, I think he's going to have that in spades here. All right, we're Holy four moly. seconds. We are four seconds below. He did take a bit of a grimace on that last, that last little pull of that, that one there. I don't know if that's going to slow him down or not, but the guy's a consummate ch you know, challenger on this thing. He's, he's, he's a gamer. He'll show up. It, it appears as though Corley's working his way into this third lap, trying his best to maintain, you know, he's like trying to keep that heart rate nice and low. He knows he has that fourth beer coming up, that all-important fourth beer. We've been talking about it all day, but he looks up to the task right now as he passes the long jump pit with 200 meters to go. This is Corey Bellamore as absolute finest. Yeah, he is, he is absolutely busting this race wide open, wide open. So I can't tell really where we are in the team races right now, but but this is, this is a clinic right now. All right, we're coming down. He needs to be under 326 to be on world record pace or better. And I think in that early scuffle where we saw the Team GB athlete go down, something happened. Corey Bellamore has had a mechanical if we were watching the Tour de France right now. He's got a flat tire. The guy is on world record pace with one spike. This is absolutely incredible. You know he's, he's blistering the bottom of his foot with every stride. There it is. And there here it goes is. Corey he Bellamore. Under. What does he have? He is he is right at world record pace right now. The fact that he's running shoeless, this is amazing. Let's see if, he, if he's got the foot speed to be able to do this. He's going to have to run about a 60-second quarter here. Is but, it shoeless Joe Jackson out uh, there? Uh, I Corey don't know, but this is exciting. He's already lapping the backside of the field as he's coming down the backstretch right now, just hammering as hard as he can. Do shoes make a difference? That's going to be yeah, that's going to be a good question right here. Is that the difference? I think you're right, though. I think that, that scuffle uh, cost him a shoe. Well, we'll let the Reddit boards con control that conversation, but right now it's all Corey Bellamore. He needs about a 30-second last 200 to come in right around that world record pace. We got FAT. Nothing can dispute this time when he crosses the finish line. You can see he's in pain. That foot is burning, but he's got 100 meters to go. 100 meters to go. He is right on it. We've got to beat 428. Is he going to get it? He's got 10 seconds to make about the last 80 meters. It's going to be tight, but this could be a world record right here. Come on, Corey. Let's see what he's got. Look at that grimace right there. He is coming, and at the line, it's going to be just shy of his world record. I definitely think the shoe played a huge factor right there. Oh, he is upset. You can see it in his face. That effort, you cannot go back and take that effort away from him. He but was, my gosh, if he had two shoes, what was he capable of today? I think he was, I, he was, he was about three to four seconds under as Chris comes in and a pretty solid time. Not his best ever today, but that's still, hey, that's sub five. Like, that's still just... In absolute that's smoking incredible time. Running. And you got the Australian right there, Finchie. Australia, Sweden, his... USA, and USA. USA will be taking the team title today. I, they... Well, we'll see. We'll see. But I think it's looking pretty strong. Looking pretty strong for them. It's a Nick Finchie without the mustache this year. I put, in a, put in a sub five. I'm just curious. I want to see the actual board. I don't have the visual on it yet, but it's... But this is just, uh, this is great. And we get the last few finishers in there. I think we might have had more people under five than we've ever had in any championship race or just any race ever on the planet. I mean, what an incredible effort Corey put out there today. I, we didn't know this. And I don't know when he lost his shoe. Maybe we'll get some video evidence of that in the highlights. But my gosh, I've run a race on the track before where I've lost a shoe, and it is not pretty. He's going to be feeling that. I'm guaranteed losing a couple of different layers of skin on the bottom of his feet, but did not stop. It didn't stop him from putting a champion's effort out there and coming just shy of his own world record. You know, don't forget, though, we still have the measurements out there. So a lot can change when it comes to this team scoring. So there's a, a lot of question marks that are still out there. You never know when a team can back their way into a championship, too. Great Britain probably still put together a pretty good team. They look pretty confident there on the sideline. I didn't see how the scoring broke down, though. Hopefully Corey didn't get injured with that too, because that's that is not that's a tough road to hoe when you uh, when you have it on one foot. 
Oh, I feel for the guy. I absolutely feel for him. You know, he came out here with clearly with the record in his sights. That was his goal for the day. You could see it with how determinately he took off from the first beer, just setting a, setting a, a what can I say, a world record pace for that, the, the first beer, and uh, two beers in lap. And yeah, he was ready to shatter it. Oh, oh, my heart hurts for Corey. But nonetheless, an incredible performance by our racers out there today. From top to bottom, back to front. I mean, this is just, this is my first Beer Mile World Classic. And I'll tell you, this will not be my last. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is, uh, you know, it wouldn't be a Beer Mile Classic if there wasn't controversy or some sort of drama. We got the drama right there. We'll wait for the final team scoring on all, on all sides, too. We don't know how that's really played out because it takes a, takes a while to compile that. Yeah, we saw no foamy burps from our pros. They can stomach those four beers, no problem. We saw just fast running <laughs> and some of the fastest chugging that I've ever seen oh, in yeah. real life. That was just incredibly impressive. But again, you know, so we're doing the team scoring, just to recap, is three men and two women from each country. It's done on cross-country style scoring. So if you score first, you get one point. Low score wins the overall team title. So the, the, the professionals over there at VS Athletics, are, they're doing the hard work. They're crunching the numbers. And they'll come back at us with those, uh, with those, with those results here in a second. And we have Corey Bellamore with the interview with Josh right now. Folks, it is my absolute pleasure to stand next to a legend once again. Corey Bellamore has just won the Beer Mile World Classic. Yet again, the legend continues to grow. Corey, congratulations on a fantastic win here today. But the one thing, the one thing that folks may not realize is Corey ran one of the fastest ever beer miles wearing one shoe. His shoe is torn off at the beginning. He runs amongst bloody stumps of feet, yet he still runs 430 for the beer mile. Corey, it is one of the most impressive displays of athleticism that we have witnessed amongst mankind. Tell us how you're feeling about the win here today. I mean, it's awesome to be here. Uh, love the support, love what Chris and Adam did to get this event going, and uh, thankful to have family and friends here watching. Uh, Wish it went a bit better, but that's all right. It's still a great showing and uh, great to be amongst everyone here. Now, Corey, you put a, a little bit of governor on your speed here today. Let us just, just think for a moment. Two shoes. What could have been with two shoes? What do you think the potential is that you have in the beer mile? I don't like to reflect too much on what could it have been, but I think the potential for the beer mile could go to the low 420s. Uh, when that will happen, hopefully soon. But uh, I think the, the top end would be right under 420 or right on 420. So he's setting himself up for future success. He has nothing left to accomplish except, again, tackling his own inner demons. Corey Bellamore, a fantastic win here today. Come on, man, raise your hands up. Raise your head up high. Beer Mile World Champion once again. Let's give it up for him, crowd. Wow, <laughs> wow, I, you know, humble, humble about it. You can, you can sense the disappointment though. Yeah. And, and again, I just gotta say that I feel for the guy. It's, it's really, sometimes you want everything to go someone's way in a race and you can, he comes away with the win, but he knew there was so much more there and he wanted to do it here. He wanted to celebrate this event that's been built around the Beer Mile, the Beer Mile World Classic and all the hard work that's gone into producing such a professional event. And so, you know, Corey, we have your back. You'll do it again some other time. Yeah, I, I, I firmly believe it. It's because it's not a fluke. He has the current world record at 428. He's run 424. And I'm not kidding. We actually did a video breakdown of his beer mile in Vancouver in 2018. And he ran a 358 mile. A 358 mile. Oh, and also put four beers in the stomach. And he just did it again. Six seconds slower, missing a shoe. He was probably on right on pace to, to hit that exact mark again. Yeah, far out. You know, it, oh, man, it was awesome. But again, you gotta, you gotta give credit where credit's due. Chris Robertson coming in second place, under five minutes for the beer mile. Oh, no, it's actually, yeah, we, so we got, we got the results here. We've got Chris Robertson followed by Nick Finch,
the the mulleted man from Australia. Oh boy, Chris Russell having a great race as well. One of the uh, one of the greats out of uh, out of the UK. Lewis Kent, one of the all time greats in there too. Yeah. I I know from friends that put on events the amount of work that goes in, all the pre-work. And so for Chris to come out here and perform the way that he did, I'm just incredibly impressed and hats off to him. Yeah, so it looks like we can confirm unless there's any disqualifications that the Americans won. Um, little surprise, bad race by Phil um, on the uh, Team Canada. So um, we'll, see, we'll, we'll see what the officials are there, but uh, here we go. Here's, here's some of the highlights there. Just quick out of there. Let's see if we can see where the contact happened. There it is. He looked like he was in front of him. I don't know how he lost his shoe. That's a little unclear. Yeah, this looks like that was about second lap. So less than 800 meters in this race. Corey Bellamore running on one shoe. And my goodness, this was, uh, this was a performance for the ages. Oh, and Corey Bellamore just made light work of this, this field. You know, I think that they all knew that it was coming, but you gotta just be so impressed when you're running behind someone, a living legend. Yeah, 22 seconds behind that. <laughs> What's the next athlete? I mean, that's just, that's just a stomping. Yeah. Look, as, as you can see, just clean through for me. Yeah, he's got, yeah, as you can see, the, the, the socks missing, the grimace on his face, the kind of the disappointment there. Yeah, well, you know, this will forever be known as Shoegate. Yeah, well, we got Shoegate, we got <laughs> Pukegate, we've got all kinds of stuff. All right, but uh, I, 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 I just can't say how much fun being in an event like this is. I, you know, big shout out to the fans here, big shout out to the athletes that fly in from all over the planet. Uh, as I mentioned, you know, one of the guys got trapped in the airport in San Diego, but they still, he still managed to show up, probably poured himself right in another race. Um, yeah. what, what's, what's been some of your reactions or highlights from the entire day? So the point of view that we have from this announcer's booth is we are looking at the backsides of a lot of the fans, and every time a fan turns around, there's a huge smile on their face. And so far, I've only seen one person walk out of here. You know, the, the engine was running, but no one was driving the car. Uh, <laughs> and that, guy, that guy's going to have a rough rest of his Saturday. But, you know, way to rocket ship into the 4th of July weekend holiday. you got a couple of days off. I'm sure you can wear the sleep that one off for, for a little while. But honestly, it's just the camaraderie of the event. It's just the high fives from the competitors, the, the support, the convivial nature. And it's just, it, it, this is second to none. This is an incredible event. Well, I'm just happy with Elizabeth Lassiter's, you know, race of redemption. You know, she, she completely crushed what she was trying to go after, uh, had a phenomenal race. I, I can't say enough about it. The fact that we have, we almost had a men's record. We set a new women's record. We set a new seniors record. Um, I'm going to have to go through the data after this because they're pos I don't I don't think there was a new master's record. I don't think anybody ran sub, uh, sub 501, so Jim Finlinson's record is still intact. But, you know, there's... And we, I need to see um, Sven's time as well, because that could be an all-time super seniors record right there, too. But look at him. Yeah, it seems like we lost audio there for a second from TP. But Elizabeth Lassiter, you know, similar to Corey Bellamore, just absolutely demolished her race. You got to think that she ran exactly how she wanted to, redemptive from last year to this year being crowned as world champion and my goodness it was it's uh <laughs> that was another hugely impressive because you saw at three beers she was she was struggling it's three beers you saw that that foam up and and man if i, I run a couple beer miles on my day and to me that would just speak the absolute end end of my day in, in racing but uh you know we we had so much more to see out of her over the last part of her beer and the last part of her race but uh, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, we're we're doing a little puff puff pass here in the in, in the booth, and I'll puff, pass my right. microphone over to TP. Oh, I think I think my audio came back. I think oh, my audio yeah, came back there. Back. So All yeah, right. sorry, <laughs> sorry folks, a little technical glitch there, but we are back live here, and you see Garrett Colon just super excited as he's running on the back. That is one of the fastest chuggers that we have in the field. Uh, you just saw all different. It's unfortunate like that the race wasn't a little bit tighter, so you could really see the dynamics that were happening even in the championship race of lead changes and, and all the movements and vacillations that happened within the chug zone. Yeah, but TP, that's why this is going to be a documentary film. Those guys are going to have captured that content. They'll tell that story. And, yeah, you know, I can't wait for that thing to come out and see all the behind-the-scenes stuff that we missed because we were folks in the front of the race. Yeah, uh, and, you know, a big shout-out to our production crews out here today. They did a phenomenal job. Um, you know, this is, we, we've definitely upped the, uh, 
up the ante on putting this event on. I, you know, you know, it's been Mux for the first couple of years. Then it was me for a couple of years was just doing a one-man show with a mic. It's, uh, it's kind of fun being in the booth here and, and being able to, to share this event with all these people across Chicago and everybody tuning in worldwide on the, on the live stream. You know, big thanks to everyone. Big thanks to everyone who, who tuned in. You know, shout out to, to, to my friends in Houston that are out there watching this. Uh, any, any shout outs that you got yourself? You know, just shout out to every single person that's tuned in on the live stream right now. This is the type of stuff that the running community desperately needs, these fun events, celebrating running, celebrating the community, celebrating ourselves, and uh, you know, celebrating these incredible athletes that were out here today. There's no, sh there's no shy amount of talent that was on the track today. And oh, it was just, absolutely just fun. not. It's a, a whole day of the same event, and yet I was never bored. No, no, there was always something new to see every time. We saw gradual increases of race. We saw some absolute dumpster fire <laughs> races earlier today. Like some people running like 20 minutes in this thing. We went from 20 minutes to four minutes and 30 seconds. Incredible. And we saw, you know, a couple of foamy burps to absolute volcano eruptions of puke from our competitors. It just... <laughs> yeah, as, as some of the fans saw there on the B-reel, yeah, we saw some... Ugh. Oh man! Some people like threw up a Jackson Pollock on the uh, on the on the track there. Yeah, that was that, that was tough. You know, one of the key marquee rules of beer miling. I, I remember being told by a senior on my team, Andy Barnett, when I was a freshman. He said, "Don't eat lunch. You're coming to the track. Don't eat lunch because that's just gonna hurt when it comes up. Just be ready to put four beers in. They're probably gonna come back up. But what I love to see also is the competitors. They're all having what we would call our celebratory fifth beer." I see a lot of people that are probably on their six, seven days. Six, seven. Well, we got the relays coming up after this too. But you're, I mean, when you're talking about diet, you're absolutely right. I mean, you, you, you don't want to like pack down a big ass burrito right before a race because uh, that, that's going to inhibit your performance for sure. No, absolutely not. And shout out to Two Brothers. They've been a great sponsor for this event. Coming up with Prairie Path, the 2023 Beer Mile World Classic official beer. Uh, you know, we've we've enjoyed one while we've been announcing. We've had we've really enjoyed some of the athletic brews. Throughout the day as we were setting up, it was hot, and those are refreshing as anything. Uh, you know, you can have your beer and don't have to deal with the negative consequences of the alcohol. So great sponsors that we've had throughout the course of the day. Two Brothers, All Worlds, uh, Long Run Coffee, and I'm forgetting one. This is going to come back. In. Athletic Brewing. There we go. Uh, all fantastic sponsors who we hope to have done justice. Support their brands. Their brands support these events, and we only can bring them back if we continue to support those brands in the same way they support our events. Yeah, I, yeah, I agree. Well, like we can't do it. It is a community. The people that love the sport. Uh, what we, you know, we really hope that this is something that we can grow into a bigger world event. Um, we have been in London twice. We started out in San Francisco in 2015, which was our biggest event, but it wasn't on a track. Moved on a track. London was a, a, a great host. Uh, then we moved to Vancouver, had the bandit race because we didn't really secure a venue, which also created like this other Mysterio and, and drama for it. Uh, then we went to Berlin, which was just fun. And we were on an old school cinder track on that one. Then we moved it to a virtual one because yeah, we, we had to deal with COVID. Then over to Manchester. Last year we were in Leuven. This year we're here in Chicago. Next year it's it's TBD, but it's probably not going to be, be in the U.S. But we hope to be able to put a put together a quality production like like we just had here, wherever it might be next time. You know, we saw it in the World Champions Championships last year in Eugene, Oregon, how well the hometown team does. Oh, yeah. We saw it here again today. And so, you know, we'll have to get our athletes over there earlier, get them acclimated into the time zone. Uh, we can, you know, offer them some tips and tricks from our own time traveling around the globe to make them as prepared as possible to keep bringing back this trophy. But, uh, you know, the, the competitors are all out in the, interior, in the inside of the track. They're getting the rundown of the results. The team trophy is out there. The individual trophies are out there. Everyone is excited for the crowning of these fantastic achievements today to celebrate the people who came out here, gave it their all. I got athletes who, they, oh wait, we got the, the, the relay. Yeah, we will have the relays coming up. The relays will be after the award ceremony, I, though. So I had I thought that, that there was a guy hanging out here who'd been in the spikes for four and a half hours, and maybe they were, but... <laughs> uh, <laughs> but everyone's, <laughs> everyone's excited to get back on the track. I'm actually hoping I might be able to get on a relay myself, but I haven't had warm-up, so I don't want to blow up my hamstring. Yeah, you got to no protect reason. yourself. Yeah, at our age. Come on. Yeah, we're, yeah the doors <laughs> fall off really fast. We've been exercising our vocal muscles, but not our physical ones. So uh, you know, I, we hope that you, everyone who's tuning in has really enjoyed... Um, enjoy the broadcast today. Uh, if you did or didn't, leave it in the comments. I know that's not really possible, but we'll check them later. We go back and read them all. We want to know what we did well, what we did wrong. I, I already know I bunged up a couple of things, but uh, the way that this works 
is that we, we just try and support each other throughout the course of these events. It's been a long day, a hard day, but nothing as long and hard as a beer mile as we heard <laughs> from Ken Call or uh, Again. Different kind of work, but uh, the people on the track are the ones that really put in all the work. And there's the uh, there's the the likely double champions. We're still waiting on the final official results, but it's a deep field there too. I just look at how look at those big smiles that you have on everyone out there. Just we're all here having a good time, all supporting each other. This was just a wonderful event. No one single performance outshines that of another, and this is an absolute ecstatic Team USA double champions. And, and the leave. fans still love it. <laughs> what, a, what a great early gift. We dethroned the Canadians on Canada Day. First time that the men have been able to win in North America. Oh, and there's those celebratory fifth beers. There yeah, go. you got to love it. There, yeah, there, there they go. There they go. You got Chris, our, you know, our, one of the main people that pr produced this thing, helped put it all together right there in the front. Still running fast. New father as well. He's got to be. He's just got to be beaming, up, beaming about how well this this event went out. And again, the smiles. You know, the camera's catching it right now. And there's a beautiful over, overhead view of this track at Hope Academy, with the, the downtown Chicago skyline in the background, uh, highlighting how beautiful this American city is. And we're lucky. You know, another thing we didn't talk about really today, because great to not talk about it, is the smoke is cleared. Yeah. You know, the athletes had clean air to breathe, um, which is a massive, massive help. Yeah, we also didn't get dumped with rain. It's it's been threatening it all day. You can smell it, a couple sprinkles here and there, but yeah, we uh, we actually pulled it off. So this is uh, this is awesome. There will be absolute chaos coming out uh, <laughs> with the relays. Oh, I'm hearing, I'm hearing words that there are some protests out there. There. Well, you know, Summer Rain and Nag Champa were my two uh, incenses of choice when I was in college, you know, hanging, hanging So out. Elizabeth Laster here with the, these are the uh, still unofficial results. We'll wait until we actually hear the official results. There, you know, there could be a lot of movement. As I mentioned, we had not heard anything about the measurements yet, and this has changed things a lot. We've had, you know, a couple years, uh, let's see, 2017 and 2018, Bryony Pierce out of the UK, she was the two-time women's, women's champion Yes. All right. So yeah. So she she backed her way into the uh, the championship because the top three <laughs> top three females um, were disqualified. You know, they, they, there is the overage factor that people don't consider, and I don't think in the show that we're gonna really get the final official results. So unofficially, what you're seeing here is Elizabeth Lasseter is the women's champion. Yes, and, and similarly unofficial on the men's side, we have Corey Bellamore, the, the reigning world champion, world record holder, narrowly missing his own world record with one shoe on at 430.8. Chris Robertson in second. Um, but, you know, again, consult the, the drones are in love with each other. Uh, we have... Uh, we're, we, we're having a couple of technical difficulties here, but as we circle back to our competitors, again, these results are unofficial. Consult BeerMile.com where the official results will be posted later this evening. And uh, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna circle down back to Josh on the track as he gives us our official sign off from a fantastic day of beer miling. Just waiting for a final word here on the uh, the official results. So uh, it's just uh, we do want everyone to be a little patient with us while we get this uh, get this sorted out. And Josh will be coming live here in just a moment with the uh, with the results. We're just waiting for that to uh, to cut away here in just a few moments. And the it has gotten gloomy really fast. I think we might have dodged a bullet for most of the day.
Sometimes you win some and sometimes you lose some, but uh, we're full of win here today at Hope Academy. Well, you know, some people here are winners, some people are losers, like some of those just god-awful heats earlier in the day. <laughs> but we love them. We, like, that's the whole point. We, we tease because we love. Absolutely. We were, ra you know, when we were sitting trackside earlier calling the races, we were razzing the competitors. But obviously when they're coming, <laughs> they, a, lot of, a lot of side smiles. A lot of side the smiles. people that we were, you know, they knew that they were going to get it. When, you're, when you come out to the Beer Mile World Classic and you drop a 17-minute Beer Mile, you know that there's going to be some words for you. There's a lot of time to pick apart that race when you're out there for 17 minutes. Yeah, it is a lot of time. Wow. Yes. All right. I think, I think teams are kind of getting around. Um, they're con consolidating right there. All right. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna pull Josh into the booth. I think Josh is going to do the readout from there. So just give it a, give us a couple seconds. We'll uh, we'll pull Josh in. The joys of live broadcasting, ladies and gentlemen. We have a, it's a couple of difficulties, but we have the one and only Josh Mux. the original the or Sergeant Pepper right here, jumping in the booth. We got the uh, we got the men's trophy here. You're probably gonna have to lose the hat. All right, there we are. I got you, TP. Wow, it's so luxurious back here. You guys actually showed up for work. I didn't uh, have any idea. We got the Kush life. We got the Kush life, man. Yeah, it's you great. do. You it's do. Great. You know, we had we had you know beers on the side and beers on the side. Look at these two brothers' beers. I think brewing. Oh, it was fantastic. Wonderful time. Cheers to another great event, Travis. It's been a, such an absolute pleasure. I don't know what Will ran off to, but I gotta say. Beer Mile World Classic 2023, one for the record books. We saw some outstanding events. I know you already talked about it so far. Uh, it has been an absolute banger of a race. Oh, geez. Yeah. Hey, I, we had a couple world records here today and, and a near miss. Like, we, we're well ahead. Technical difficulties with shoes. But outside of that, this has been a you know, it's just been a bang up set of races. Oh, man, he ran on clouds. He didn't need shoes. What a great job out there by Bellamore. Look, uh, it's been my pleasure to host the event out on the track. I know you guys did a wonderful job in the booth. Plenty of accolades all the way around. And from all of us who have been a part of the Beer Mile World Classic, thank you for tuning in. Uh, it has been our pleasure to bring you this dramatic, eventful, and beautiful uh, athletic uh, endeavor here today. So with that, uh, I wanted to say thank you again to everyone who's been a part of this event, volunteers, staff, everyone included. And Travis, I think it's about time for us to actually have a beer out on the track. Uh, I, think, I think we're due. Deal? I think we're due. Yeah, let's do it. Let's pull the plug on this bad boy. Thanks a lot, folks. We'll see you again next year. Cheers.